throws it to Grossman, and they're going to call that a legal pass. It was close to Grossman on that pass. Oh, yeah, it was an incomplete pass. I mean, he got it there. If it was up, it would have been a completion. But, but nice job on the rush on the Second right side. They bring the in the corner, and that was Latre Jacques. Marcus Grossman goes out wide to the left. Out wide to the right is going to be Jordan Huffman. Second down and 10, right at the 20 for the Hornets. Here come the Mounties on a safety blitz, and they throw it right over to the tight end who hasn't been talked about all day long, for it, and just a great pass to Noah Hoffman on a delayed screen to the tight end as the blitz came from the corner by the Mounties. Well, you don't see that much. That's the innovation of this offense. You see the tight end There's coming the out, blitz. and you see the blocking of the tight end, and he comes and slips through, and the D offensive lineman just got nobody to block. That's a long way for them big guys to run. Kane Wilson keeps this one himself, gets a couple yards on the play. But nice innovation. So the very seldom used tight ends. Do well on that play. Spencer Owens now comes in at tight end on the right-hand side. That's his fourth reception of the game, or excuse me, of the season. Kane Wilson underneath center now, something you don't see the Hornets do very often. Second down and nine, right at the 47-yard line. Kane Wilson now from under center, hands it off, looking for an opening, taking an opening, can't get back to the 50. Well, they might give him the 50 as Hewlett. Gets a gain of maybe two on the play. They're going to mark him at the 50. We get timeout with a player on the field. So with 12, 58 to go, and timeout on the field, it's the Hornets 21, the Mounties 7. You're watching Hornet football on Sportsnet, USA.net. And that creates an added pressure. When you don't have a fullback in the backfield leading those stretch plays or those draw long lead plays, the offensive line relishes that opportunity to open up holes whether it's those lead plays off the tackle or on the outside, you want to open up those holes. And they're going to say, third and fourth quarter, let's keep running those because we only get three yards now. Later in the game, we're going to be picking up 8, 12, 20. You know, we talked about the tight end, too, and not being utilized, but we saw them in the key to the county game where they liked seam routes with the tight end, and they ran seam routes, which basically it's the tight end in the slot or right off a tackle just going straight up the field court haven't seen them do that. We didn't see it at College of the Canyons. We only really saw it in the Santa Ana game. So the tight end is not utilized that much offensively. Well, they're, they're utilized when they're needed to be. You saw the seam routes from the receivers going in the slot. So when you see it's matching up, match up of what it gives you. They have the tight end. Maybe they're covered. Maybe the rush is good. So you keep them in the block. Right now, you're trying to combat that aggressiveness that the Mounties have, bringing, those, bringing that pressure. The last three run, the last three plays, they brought a, brought a blitz from the corner and from the linebackers. So you're keeping them there for extra protection yeah. is what you're doing. And seven time, sometimes you'll hear that you need that extra protection. Kane Wilson is rushed a little more. Ladarius Skelton, a little quicker. Robert Johnson goes out wide left at Justin Mannyweather in the slot on the left-hand side along with Darius Simpson. Third down and eight at the 50. Kane Wilson going to go over to Justin Mannyweather, who catches it. It depends where he gets the spot. Short of a first down, we'll see what the Hornets do. Yeah, and you really like uh, Mannyweather and Simpson. Darius out there, you see him in number 89. They're both kick and punt returners. Open field, they're both dangerous. Fourth down and a half a yard. They run it with Hewlett right up the middle, goes off a guard and gets a first down. Once Hewlett gets going, you can tell the type of special back that he is. He hasn't he hasn't shown it completely. But if you like we said last week before the College of the Canyons game, you give him 20 carries, you give Henry uh, Jeffrey 20 carries, you're going to get 100 yards. Hewlett last week had 99 yards. Robert Downs the third comes into the game. Marcus Grossman out wide left. Kane Wilson looking that side. Nobody's going to pick him up. Sidestep. You know, that's a nice play by the Mounties. The middle of the field was wide open. Kane Wilson looked like he was going to keep running. Yeah, well, actually, it looked like he was going to throw it downfield. He had Jordan Huffman open at the very end, but he saw that he passed the line of scrimmage, so he had to go down. Gain of two on the play. You know what I like, Mark? Live stats. 
I, I noticed that. Robert yeah. Johnson out wide to the right. You sound really smart today. Yes, I do. Jordan Duffman out wide to the left with Marcus Grossman. Technology he, on your phone. Hewlett in the backfield. Kane Wilson, shotgun formation. Second down and eight, just across the 40. Marcus Grossman goes in motion from right to left. They hand it off to Hewlett. Hewlett goes straight up the center, off a of center, Corey, to the right side. Gets a gain of one on the play. Asaro, nice job. I mean, he could have been fooled on that play by the motion of Grossman coming out, but he stayed at home. And by the way, the young man is a sophomore, 6'3", 260, out of Auckland, New Zealand. Simpson now comes back in the game. Abdul Haq goes out wide to the left. Dries Simpson comes out wide to the right. Like you said, recruiting out of state. Both these teams. Hawk out of Seattle. Asara out of New Zealand. Third down and seven for the Hornet. Kane Wilson goes back. Delayed blitz. Kane Wilson gets away from one. Finds the middle of the field and throws it right in the middle. And I tell you, Dries Simpson just shows you what hands he got and what feet he's got as he goes out over the 10. And let's credit Kane Wilson for being a strong guy out there. Like we said earlier, a fortified guy out there. You're going to have to come more than an arm tackle across the chest to bring him down. It's first down. They fake it. Wilson rolls away. Here comes the pressure. Flips it up. Throws it over there to Justin Mannyweather. Mannyweather comes back and helps him as Kane Wilson gets sandwiched on the play. Yeah, good crunch on the end for the Mounties. Good defense and bring down by Lamar Dawson. But Kane Wilson, again, he's strong. You need that. That was Rosales and Batu coming from side to side. Bill Hawk goes out wide left. Simpson, who's got some of the better looking hands that we've seen in a while. Well, he went low coming across the middle, brought it back up and continued moving. Hewlett in the backfield. Kane Wilson looks over. Just inside the 10, the Hornets trying to get on the board again. Kane Wilson, three-step drop, throws a slant pattern, touchdown. Oh. Perfect slant pattern with a prettier pass. Ma Malik Abdul Hawk out of Cleveland High School in Seattle, Washington, and I know his dad is listening. There you go, six six. Well, he said he said six seven last week, so six seven out of Seattle. Watch him box out there. He is there. He knows he's going to get hit, and since you know you're going to get hit, you might as well catch the ball. Well, and what you like on that play is we get ready for the point after. Keen Wilson threw to a spot, Corey. He didn't throw to the receiver. He threw to a spot. The ball is spotted. Kick is up. And the kick is good. With 9.45 to go, after. the Hornets get their 28th point on the board. It's the Hornets, 28. The Mounties, 7. You're watching Hornet football on sports at USA.net. And i got to go back to that with wide receivers. People keep forgetting sometimes quarterback's going to say, I'm going to throw it there. As a receiver, you've got to run the right route because that's where the ball's going to be. You remember Fullerton a few years, maybe more than a few years ago, they had a problem with their receivers running and completing their routes. It may have been the worst receiving core that we've seen at Fullerton College. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know, 2000, uh, 2010 maybe. I don't. Around that time when everybody thought they were good right. on the team. They didn't complete their routes. They weren't as, as effective as they should have been. But after that, guys like Eli Pleasant, uh, Ryan Longoria, those guys in the group last year, this year, they really got back to running their routes, yeah. finishing their routes, making the catch, making the block. So that's what you like about these receivers for the Hornets. And if you're a quarterback, you just make me look better because I'm picking a spot, throwing it, and it's right on the money. Kane Wilson, 8 of 12, 116 yards and one touchdown. Hawk, well, nice job. One catch, eight yards, one <laughs> touchdown. They ah. spread the ball around, too. That's what I like about this Hornet team. Scott, back deep. Scott's going to backpedal, takes it in the end zone. Scott's bringing it out, comes at 10, cuts the outside, stays on his feet, tries to turn the corner across the 20, drug out of bounds at the 21. Brought down by Trey Fullwood. And even this Mount Sac team, when you look at receiving course, they're 12 deep. The Hornets are 12 deep. You've got to like that as a quarterback that you can go any place with the football. It's nice. Yeah, it really is for both these quarterbacks and these very good teams. The Hornets up by three touchdown, 28 to seven with 9.39 to go here in the first half. Big Trey Elliott comes back out. Out wide left is gonna be Jackson. In the slot is gonna be Scott on the left-hand side. Javi Mangale 
looking over, taking his time. Mangale gonna throw it over here, flips it out to Scott. Scott cuts back to the inside, gets taken down after a gain of seven on the play. Nice little tackle taken there by Cody, Cody Darrow on that play. As you watch it right here, Mangley flips it out here. Cody Darrow stays at home to make the defensive play or Scott's still running. Second down and three. Mangley looks back. He's gonna go to the other side this time. The work done one side, go to the other side. They're gonna find it right there at the marker. It should be a first down for the Mounties. It is as they move the chain. The left go back to the right with the same receiver. Result, 10 yards. First down, Mounties right at the 34. Looking over the sideline, Coleman out wide to the right. Jackson out wide to the left. In the slot on the left-hand side, the man who picked up those first downs, Scott. Mangley looks over. This time, Mangley's gonna hang it up. And Corey, that time, they read it out, and Massey gets, if he's lucky, about a yard loss on the play, not close to getting back to the line of scrimmage. And we'll go down to the sideline. Avery, what you got? The, office, the offensive line coach for Fullerton College is stressing communication right now, and they're making sure that everyone inside the box is talking to each other and focusing on double team the inside guys. Back up to you guys. So far, that offensive line is, is holding its own against Mount Sac. Jackson comes out wide to the left. Scott in the slot. Coleman out wide to the right. Second down and 11 for the Mounties at the 30. Mongolay throws it over in the flat. Thrown backwards, incomplete pass. So I thought for a second as they tried to go to Chandler, the freshman running back out of Pasadena. So it's going to move it back. It's going to bring up a third down and 10. Trey Elliott stays in the backfield. Jackson comes out wide to the left. Scott in the slot on the left-hand side. Coleman out wide to the right. Trey Elliott, the running back for Mount Sac. Javi Mangale looking over. Big third down play with eight minutes exactly to go here in the first half. The Hornets up by three touchdowns, 28 to seven. Mangale goes over, has time to step up. He's gonna take off running himself, and Corey, it's a foot race. He's taken down as he gives himself up at the 40, short of a first down. And he slaps the ball, realizing that if I had a lunge for it, I may have gotten it. He's flushed out of the pocket, giving chase is Shane Darso. He feels the pressure there as he was going to maybe get leveled by a defensive back, and that's why he went down. So Andrew Rodriguez will come in to punt it away for the Mounties. Rodriguez has had some nice kicks. Looked like he was gonna fake it, then gives it the old soccer style kick away from Justin Mannyweather who just retreats and lets the ball die and it's gonna die at about the 23. First down and 10, 7.08 to go here in the first half. The Hornets have looked good. It's the Hornets, 28, the Mounties, 7. You're watching Hornet football on Sportsnet, USA.net. Corey Nalen, Richie, Avery, myself, and really a group of fantastic TV people here from Fullerton College. I tell you, the TV department is outstanding here on the sidelines. You look at everything that's going on down there. The crowd is a good size. Mount Sac has a great turnout well, across the way. Walnut's not that far. So if they don't have a big turnout, then Mount Sac is not that good this year in football. Ladarius Skelton. <laughs> Ladarius Skelton comes in. We get timeout order. You know what? I think the coaches were listening to that saying, what do you mean? What do you mean they're not that good? Look at the turnout we got out here. Corey, they came in this game 3-0. Yeah. When you really look at the competition both them and the Hornets had to start this game, it was an outrageous, outstanding competition but they all took care of what they needed to do to get to this game. And they did it in a manly fashion by really putting points up against their opponents. Yeah, that's what you have to do. Last week they beat Santa Monica 41 to six. Santa Monica is moving up from the American di division to the national division. And they're just finding out how, well, how intense it can be, but that's something Santa Monica continue to build. Same thing like Riverside did six years ago when they came up from the division, they went 11-0, didn't get to the playoffs because they were playing in that lower division. 
Santa Monica comes up and they're in the Northern League, but Mount Sac, they beat them, just like Fullerton beat College of the Canyon, Cerritos, and Santa Ana. You wanna have decent games against that competition so you're ready for teams like Mount Sac and Fullerton. Dual Hawk out wide to the right with Simpson in the slot. Robert Johnson over to left. They run it up the middle with Ladarius Skelton handing it off to Hewlett. Hewlett gets stopped in the backfield for a three yard loss. And Elmer Paoni, again, that interior. Monacolo, left to right, Paoni and Alusi. No, excuse me, Aluesi. Their front four long. Huffman comes in the game. He's now out wide to left. They're going to hand it off. Fake it to Hewlett. This time, Ladarius Skelton gets nowhere. And so the offense is going backwards with six minutes and 33 seconds to go in this first half for the Hornets. Yeah, Pony and Isara there on the end. Vanakula, the middle linebacker, that's Alexander. He's going to come out now for a nickelback. That's Latre ja Jaquez, along with Max Latou. Armando Rosales, excuse me, Anthony Rosales, will get that secondary if they get this first down. Darius Skelton starts Hewlett in motion. He looks for Hewlett. He's going to take it himself. Nobody there. Can he outrun him at the 30? He's still running. It's a 40. It's a foot race. It's a 50, the 40, the 30. They knock him out of bounds. And that young man, the leading rusher for this Hornet team, has more speed at quarterback than most people think. Well, he picks up 50 yards, and again, it's a straight design run. Look at the play. He knows everybody's on the right side, so you unbalance the defense, and you get them one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker, and this is the exact result that they wanted. First down and 10. At the 25, Skelton rolls out, throws it over here, and Justin Mannyweather says, excuse me, I think I found somebody, and drops it. Oh, I'm sorry, that was your wallet, not well, mine? What he was looking at is he was looking at the middle of the field as the ball was coming. He saw green, and he was looking, and, well, you need that wallet to make a purchase. Second down and 10 at the 25. Out wide to the right is Abdul Haq. Simpson in the slot on the right-hand side. Robert Johnson goes out wide to left. Skelton in the backfield with Hewlett. Second down and 10. Skelton's going to take it himself. Looks for something on the outside. Gets nothing outside and is knocked out of bounds on the sidelines at the 25. We have a flag down over there. I'm not sure if it was inadvertent Skelton or not. Skelton takes it, knocked out of bounds. There's a flag down. So we'll see if it's a personal foul on that side of the field. what I'm getting told by our spotters here in the booth. Was there a flag? After the play was over, dead there ball. Watch the replay, Personal Mark. foul, number two of the defense. There you That's go. That's half the to the goal. Oh. First down. Uh. So he rolled Skelton out of bounds. I didn't. I was surprised by the flag. I didn't think there was that. Uh, I don't know. I guess you, I shouldn't well, be referee. Well, he, he did give him a show at the end, but he was out of bounds. But it was... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like you on that one. I was like, uh, excuse me, you're looking at what? Wilson out wide to the left for the Hornets. Robert Johnson out wide to the right. Darius Wilson with him. Then Justin Manny with her. Skelton in the backfield. Hewlett rolls out. They're going to flip to Hewlett. It gets knocked out on a heads-up defensive play by the Mounties. Yeah, Anthony Rosales is 6 feet 220. He gets his hand up. He sees the play perfectly. And he's had a solid game in this first half. Five minutes to go. The Hornets, 28. The Mounties, seven. Skelton brings him out, looks over the defense. Hewlett almost moves a little. Skelton keeps him himself. He just walked all the way home, said, Mom, I'm here. Open up the front door. Touchdown, Hornets. 13 yards. 5 4 to go. And you watch it here. Watch the offensive line. You see the pulling guard there. That's Crandall. I'm just looking for somebody to block. When your left guard pulls and he's just running out there looking for somebody to block. Let me put it this way. If your left guard is frolicking in the field, your offense is good. Ball is spotted. Kick is up. And the kick is good with 5.04 to go. It's now the Hornets, 35, the Mounties, 7. You're watching Hornet football on Sportsnet, USA.net. Okay, I, I, well, I was going to say, I they're, was gonna ask you they're something, using that aggressiveness of Mount Sac's defense 
to it Fullerton's advantage. Mount Sac has an excellent defense. They have physicality and speed. They're very aggressive and they're moving up the field. Fullerton is waylaying that by going straight up misdirection at the same time. Well, I was going to flip it on you for a second because we uh, we said if defense steps up, one of these teams could be in trouble. Brian Crook's defense is only allowed seven points so far in the game. Corey, is it because there isn't a boldness by Mount Sac, or are you going to say maybe this defense has been progressing week after week after week? They played well. Mount Sac just hasn't found their rhythm yet on the offensive side of the ball. You see a team that ran for 302 yards last week. Fullerton only gives up, I believe it's 20, well now, about 58 yards per game. Mount Sac gave up two yards, average two yards a game in their first three. So, so far it's been the defense who has played well, but the offense continues to roll like a juggernaut and refuses to go away. Scott back deep along with him is gonna be Ballard. Scott's gonna back pedal, he's gonna let it hit the ground, it's gonna bounce over his head and he's deciding to take it out of the end zone. At the goal line, he goes up to the field and doesn't even get back to the 10 yard line. Probably a little indecision, Corey. He should have taken that and the knee. We get a flag on the field. So Nick says there's a flag and it's way back at the 40 and that means maybe somebody was offsides on that one. Offsides, kicking team. Five yard penalty, replay the kick. So much for good special teams. Five minutes ago, 35 to seven. Stick around at halftime. Richie's gonna catch up with the coaches and Avery's gonna talk to them and see what happened, how they feel in this first half. And then we're gonna be looking for a little sideline interviews here during this game on sportsnetusa.net. So we get a little change down there as Spencer Owens. Oops, wrong guy, I got the wrong guy out there. William Summers comes out deep now for the Mounties. So Summers out deep. Zombie Donuts getting eat behind us. See, we take care of everybody out here. Donuts from both sides of the field. Look at that. Happy gentleman stepping, standing up behind me eating zombie donuts here on sportsnetusa.net. We're feeding everybody in the booth today, Corey Nalen. Our spotter, Gabby Nalen, down at our right. Corey Nalen, right next to me. A host of thousands in the booth. Taking it to 10, looking to go to the outside. Nice little turn, taking right there. Up the field is William Summers, and William Summers gets across the 25. Two more flags on the field. Probably gonna get a block in the back. It's got a little music in the background here, huh? And Williams has it on the right side, and the block in the back is, well, not there. Well, maybe they did call it there on Block. Low block. Number 36. That's going to be half the distance to the goal. First down, Mount Sac. So it's out of the field of the camera. So in the first half, I think that's 10 penalties on Mount Sac. I think Fullerton has four. We'll check the live stats in just a moment. So they're going to move it back, spot it at the 14. It'll be first down and 10 for the Mounties at the 14 with four. 53 to go here in the first half. It's the Hornets 35, the Mounties 7. You're watching Hornet football on Sportsnet, USA.net. Eight penalties for Mount Sac, two for Fullerton. Big Trey Elliott in the backfield. Out wide left is going to be Jackson. In the slot is going to be Elliott on the left-hand side. See if they start running the ball a little more. They fake it, throw it over here in the flat. Throw it to Coleman. Coleman gets a gain of nine on the play. Nice little stop, then turn after the catch. Two more yards after the catch. And with 4.42 to play in the half, here's where Fullerton might employ their bend but don't break their break defense. Nice pitch and catch there. Jackson once again out to the left. Elliott in the slot. Second down and two right across the 20. They look over the sideline. 
Mangale at quarterback. Elliott with him in the backfield. Will Hoyt, the up back for the Mounties. Will Hoyt leading that one. Trey Elliott following it on the right-hand side will be enough for a first down. So once again, they utilize the fullback in the hole first with Trey Elliott, the running back, right behind him. Yeah, they pick up five yards each run with the fullback in play. Gary, and Jack, for a sorry, first down. Jack Jackson and Taj Jones having a little conversation on the near side. So there's Will Hoyt leading the way. And Elliott just needs to get on through for those four yards. Shotgun formation. The Hornets creep up. They're coming after Mangale. He's got to take it down. And when he does, the ball comes out. That's a fumble. Take it in his own touchdown, Hornets. And that was Devin Hessler picking it up and making the catch. And that sack, Oscar Bergueno gets the sack, forces the fumble right up the middle. He wasn't down. He was still on Bergueno when he threw the ball out or it fumbled out. And you see four defensive players running. Nobody was going to share the money. Nobody's going to share that ball. All four of them wanted the touchdown. So the fumble, the pickup, the recovery, and the Hornets get in with 3.36 to go here in the first half. That's their first time out of the half. So Mount Sack calls a timeout. So with 3.36 to go, the Hornets 41, the Mounties 7. You're watching Hornet football on SportsnetUSA.net. All I want to say is I may have been wrong, but I'm not going to tell you what I was wrong about. Okay. Big time. Well, Richie... Avery, I know the coaches are going to be happy when you talk to them at halftime when they go off the field. But Mount Sack has always been able to come back in these they games. Can't hear it's going you. to be interesting they, they can't hear you. to see if they can come back in the second half. They can't hear you with the music going on. Now you can speak to them. Guys, ask the coaches <laughs> if they feel. I mean, they're, they're going to be up by a few, but Mount Sack always makes those charges in the second half. Nobody can feel like this game is over in the first half if you're a Hornet fan. I know you'll catch up with the coaches and ask them that at halftime. You're just so giving them their grade, aren't you? Ball is spotted, kick is up, and the kick is good. With 3.36 to go, it's the Hornets 42, the Mounties 7. You're watching Hornet football on sportsnetusa.net. Remember, all our games are brought to you by Miller, Toyota of Anaheim, and Zombie Donuts, which are getting eaten up here by our guests in the booth with us here on sportsatusa.net. Tom Duff, we miss you today. We thought you might be here. We hope you're watching us here on sportsatusa.net. Tracy Thack, we're back at home. Trace, I hope you're feeling better on sportsatusa.net. To our family in Arizona, to everybody there, thanks for watching. And right now, it's been exciting if you're a Hornet fan, but if you're a Mountie fan, don't give up. We have seen them come back in many games against this Hornet team here on, Hort on SportsnetUSA.net. Chandler back deep for the Mounties. So the Hornets with 42 points in the first half. Chandler waiting to receive back deep. Deep kick. Chandler's going to walk back. He's going to stroll back to the three. Chandler at the three, looking to go to the outside. Gets a corner, gets cut down at the ankles right when he hits the 20. Flips up like a piece of cheese and lands at the 22. That was by David Farmer, starting safety today. And he's in there on defense. He'll be joined with by Cameron Powell, the player of the week last week in the Southern is it Southern Division? I think so. Okay. We'll see if Javi Mangale comes back in. Corey, he he's, there. he's there. Tough quarterback for this Mountie team. He got mugged. He came off, limping off the field. I didn't think he was going to come back on. Come in, this young man. He's back out there leading his troop. Like what he's doing. Jackson out wide to the left. 
Elliott in the Scott on the left-hand side. Trey Elliott, the running back. They hand it off to Trey Elliott. He goes off right tackle. A quick little slant play gets a gain of four on the play. I believe that was Jermichael Moore along with Oscar Bergueno. And you see this left side of the defensive line, Montre Bonner running the play down. That was a better run than we thought. Good push up front by the Mountie line. Jackson out the left, Scott in the slot on the left, Coleman out wide to the right. He's been quiet so far. Elliott still in the backfield, shotgun. This time, Javi Mangale takes it himself, goes down across the 40. He knew he had a first down, gave himself up. First down for the Mounties, moving the ball. And I think they realize that they're going to have to utilize his ability to move out of the pocket on this run here. He doesn't like to run, but he's there. And actually, that is a no, that's still Mangale. But again, he utilizes his footwork well. Elam now in the game at running back for the Mounties. Hornets come up the middle. Mangale checks out of it. He goes back looking for Coleman. He's going to take it down again. He was hoping to get it to Coleman. Now he flings it down the middle of the field. Fights Elliott. Elliott turned. Touchdown Mounties. But we have a flag at the 40-yard line. So Mangale leaves it alive. Elliott finds an opening for him. He gets it to him, gets it in the end zone. We'll see what Mongolay's the two flags are. For a so touchdown. it shouldn't be roughing the passer, but Mangale runs out, being chased by Cameron Proctor. He's at the 40 across the line of scrimmage, but nice touchdown if it stands. Demetrius Scott just got past the deepest guy. So we've got two flags on the play. We'll see what they are by the officials, see if the touchdown stays on the board. This would be an enormous touchdown. Boy, the way the Mounties are walking, Corey, I think it's coming back. Yeah, either way, if, if it's offset, it's gonna come back. If it's against the Mounties, it's gonna come back. But that walking back to the line of scrimmage, you know. And it was a nice play Yeah. by Mangale and then Elliott to get There were open. two fouls on the play, one against each team. Illegal forward pass, Mount Sack. Personal foul, roughing the passer, Fullerton. Those penalties will offset. If it's an illegal forward pass, it, yeah. it can't be roughing the passer, can no, it? Because you make sure a runner now. He's a runner once he crosses the line of scrimmage. I don't understand that second penalty. You're no longer a passer once you go across the line yeah. of scrimmage. So it makes you a runner, so it should be marching him back for that one only penalty. Now you could say you were calling a personal foul on a hit on a defensive play, defensive and, and, player. And again, that's not a, yeah, he hit him right when the ball was thrown. That was even iffy, but no, he can't have an unnecessary. Both ways. Yeah. So it's first down and 10 at the 40. We're gonna play it again. Javi Mangale says, let's try it one more time. He goes back, looks, has time to throw, looking for the middle of the field. This time it's an incomplete pass, and we get roughing the passer. No, that, it's not rough. It's not going to no? be roughing the passer because Montre Bonner was there right when the ball was thrown. We'll see the replay. Oh. Little hit to the head. Oh, they're going to call it a legal hit to the head. Do we have it? Okay. So we're getting people behind us talking about the officials. Of course, we if never say anything if you bad have, about If you the have officials. that replay again, could you show it one more time if you have it? If you're a Mountie fan, you thought it was an excellent call. If you're a Hornet fan, you go, wait a minute, what is that? And now Mongale is out, and that's going to bring in the new quarterback, Richard Stametti. Stametti out of Las Vegas Desert Oasis High School. So Stametti now in at quarterback, looks over. Doesn't get the warm up. Stametti goes back, and usually these are the quarterbacks to watch out for. He takes off running. Stametti's getting chased down behind. It's going to get taken no and a nice no hit by the Hornet defense Richard Corey. Stametti, the nice no hit because you probably would have gotten another flag. So you see him moving right, being chased down. Linebacker had no chance to get him. Ryan Simpson getting some playing time out of Notre Dame High School in Riverside. Stametti, one attempt this year, one completion so far this season as a backup quarterback. Jackson out wide to left. Elliott in the slot on left-hand side. Stametti at shotgun formation. Flings it over there. Oh, almost taken out of the air as he tries to go to Elam. 
<laughs> rolling out of the backfield. Kareem McDonald out of Wilson High School in Washington, D.C. Knew he had a pick. And that's why he's on the line. And he knows he had a pick six. He, that's not going to come around for another, I don't know, 553 plays. That's a long <laughs> time. <laughs> so Betty looks over the sideline. Says, I won't throw that again. Jackson out the left. Elliott in the slot on the left-hand side. Coleman out wide to the right. Massey, the running back in the backfield. Stametti looks back. The Hornets come up. Here comes a blitz. All out running Stametti. He's going to fling it. Throw it at Elliott. Runs underneath it. Gets a hand on it and couldn't lay it out to bring it in. Yeah, and Demetrius Scott had two, three, four steps on Jay Brown. These defensive backs out of Eleanor Roosevelt are doing a good job. You've got Jay Brown from Eleanor Roosevelt, Davian Bullock also out of that high school, and Taj Jones. So that's just DB high school, isn't it? Yeah. Trey Elliott comes back in the game. Jackson out to the left. Coleman out to the right. Trey Elliott at running back. Stamedi at quarterback. Shotgun. Fourth down. We get time out on the field out. with Fortune. one minute 30 second seconds to go half. it's the hornets 42 the mountie seven you're watching hornet football on sportsnet usa.net high school football next week right friday night possibly Possible there should be a little fullerton high school football yeah. no there should be high no? school football next week bassett versus loera at Glover. oh that's right bassett versus loera yeah still got to confirm it I'm trying to get the, the Fullerton High School coaches to work more often. I get to work on their days off. You know, they're dancers, they're dancers during the day and coaches at night from Fullerton High School. So the Hornets call a timeout with this. And Corey, Stametti, when he asked Tom, does it throw a bad pass? Oh, it's a very good pass. He stepped up in the pocket. pocket. Again, maybe no no chance to warm up. He overthrows it. He, he gets a chance. Maybe that's on the money. So do you put pressure on him, or do you go back in deep coverage since it's fourth down and about 13? I'm going to ask you, to go an all-out blitz? <laughs> they got fourth down across the way. Yeah, fourth and three. Yeah. Oh, it's fourth and three. I gave him an extra 10. Okay, call me a homer. Tried to tack on 10 more yards. Stametti comes in and says, Mark. Don't try to help me. I only need three yards. Trey Elliott looks back over and says, how many yards did Mark say? Is that three or 13? I'm not quite sure. Jackson out wide left. Coleman out wide to the right. Elliott in the slot on the left-hand side. Stametti looking over. Here come the Hornets up the middle. The pressure. They throw it over here. Throw it to Elliott. Takes a hit on the helmet. Stays on his feet. Again, Mark, wrap up. You're good. Boy, they started moving the chains. I wasn't quite sure he made it. No, neither was I. I couldn't believe that. They moved the chains, and I'm thinking, he's short. So here they are, Taz Jones with the hit. There's the stop, and I'm not sure. It depends on where his foot stepped out of bounds. Well, now that, you know, they don't know where the original chains went, the thing is they actually moved the chains on the official. It's going to be real, real close. I don't know. If it's down at the 36, where it looks like it is on the far side if, of the field, he doesn't make it. No, if it's closer to the 36, yes, they've got it. If it's at the 37 where they're at, they don't have it. So, so we've got timeout on the field with a minute 23. We're going to take a measurement. It's the Hornets, 42. Mount Sack 7, you're watching Hornet Football on Sportsnet, USA.net, in conjunction with Fullerton College TV. We'll see the eyesight's good. We've got people to the left of me saying it's inches. Cornelian, you got the best eyesight up there. Did they make it? I, it doesn't look like it. So we're going to see as they stretch the chains. Oh, wow. Oh, it's not even close. Yeah, like we said, if he was at the 36, there was going to be close, but they're at the 37. And that's first down and 10 for the Hornets. So a minute 23 to go. The Hornets take it over and downs. They're up by 35. It's the Hornets, 42. The Mountie 7 here on Sportsnet, USA.net. It will be interesting to see what the Hornets do on this drive. Go for six. 
No, no, I'm serious. You, you're going to go for a touchdown. Normally, you're going to go in at halftime when you're going to take yeah. a knee. But with Skelton and downs the third and Johnson out there. and Skelton comes back, takes it down himself, looks a run, spins, gets across the 40. Skeleton, the ball carry, he keeps it and goes to the Should we go down and tell Nick what his real name is at halftime? Who? Nick Biscardo keeps calling him Skeleton. He is skinny when you see him from up here. But again, when you see him on the field. He's a big guy. Yeah, he's, he's a big guy. He's a big kid. Second down and six. Glorious music in the background. The Hornets on the field. Hewlett goes out. They throw it over to Hewlett. Hewlett takes it. Nice little flat pass. Goes out. Gets beyond the yard markers for a first down. And more importantly, gets out of bounds with 47 seconds to play. The clock is running. He didn't get out of bounds. So oh, they okay. continue to run the clock. Skelton goes. Simpson goes back deep. That is a backward pass and it should be out at the 39. That's a great call by the officials on the field. As Simpson deeps, dips way hole. back. And you watch it here, Corey, and it's a deep. You see where it goes. It goes from the 40 to the 39 behind Ladarius. And Ladarius Skelton throws it backwards. Nice call by the officials. It's now going to bring up a second down and 20 for the Hornets. Fuller can go on for a first down. They still have one more timeout. If they don't get the first down, you got to believe they're going to let this clock run out. Skelton looks over the defense. The Mounties. Yeah, hand it right up the middle. Here comes Hewlett, cuts the middle, tries to cut, drops his head across the 50 to the 47, and the clock continues. Hornets get up quickly. They don't use the timeout. Skelton goes back. Here comes the pressure, throws it deep, goes to Huffa, tries to get there, gets the flag on a reach back, and boy, I tell you. Skeleton. I'm not sure I'd throw that flag, Corey. That didn't even look like Ten contact. That was generous Pass for there. the official. Number two of the defense. That's and a you credit penalty. the receiver for First making foul. initial contact. That's one of those basketball plays, Mark, Harry Webster. where you're at the three-point line. You get the defender in the air. They move five feet to the side of you, and then you jump into them. But all he did was reach back. He didn't even try to come back for the ball, and the defender did not push him away. So, I mean... Sometimes I think the officials just need to hold on to the flag every once in a while and call it incidental contact. We get time out on the field with 6.3 seconds. It's the Hornets, 42. The Mountie 7 here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Corey, let's go back to that because we talked about it many times. Too many times the officials start to react before they watch the entire play. One like that. You see a receiver reaching back, and they're going to give the benefit of the doubt to a receiver, even though he's not being pushed, shoved, or knocked away in any way or form. True. Okay. You see Gerald Hewlett there on that replay, putting, in a, putting them in a position to maybe get six before the halftime gun goes off. You looking for a Toyota from Miller Toyota of Anaheim? No, no, I was looking for my phone charger that I left here about three weeks, two weeks ago. Is that it? <laughs> TV goes off. So 6.3 seconds. Abdul Haq goes out wide to the right. Robert Johnson goes out wide left with Simpson. Justin Mannyweather to left-hand side. Skelton goes back, hands it off to Hewlett. Hewlett dips, comes back out, and that's knocked out of bound with seven tenths of a second left and you look like they wanted to get him on that right hash mark for the field goal kicker to come in and there's a spread you want to create enough time to get him out there on the season Antonio Estrada one for two long is 24 so the ball is going to be spotted at the 32 probably be what held <laughs> brought down at what yeah, you get a spot at 32, you add 5, and then you add 10. So that's going to be at the 37, a 47-yard attempt for him. Estrada, Antonio Estrada, out of Hollywood, Florida, Chaminade High School. 
Now, you know, is it this not the play where I run down the field, go to the sideline, and pretend I'm just an announcer, and then <laughs> going for the touchdown? We were talking, Phil Austin on the sideline then. So it's gonna start at the 39. So it'll be a 49 yard attempt. 39 yards, you add 10, we get timeout. Timeout, Mount Sack. That's their last timeout of the half. So it's the Hornets 42, the Mounties seven, with seven tenths of a second to go here in the first half. Remember other games on sportsnetusa.net. Golden West College later on on sportsnetusa.net. Rashawn Haylock calling the action when they're at home. Andrew King is with him. And of course, LA Valley on sportsnetusa.net this year. So make sure you catch all those community college football games on sportsnetusa.net. And then once a week, Corey Nealon's got a little high school football on Friday night. Last Friday, well, a very good high school game for Fullerton High School at their new stadium, which is absolutely beautiful. If you get a chance, go see a high school game at the Fullerton Union High School District Stadium. They redid the field. It is magnificent. Kudos to the school, the district, and to the coaches and everybody that made that possible. The field is beautiful. Let me tell you, it's really a fun place to watch a football game. A way to get those new stands in as well. Spot it at the 39. Low line drive, just through the up. Oh, it to the left. I thought it went to, looked like it was going through, didn't it? So that brings us to the end of the first half. As we come to the end of the first half, it's the Hornets 42, the Mounties 7 here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Looking for Richie down on the sideline. Richie, let me know if the coaches are happy and what they expect of that second half. I'm here with Coach Tim Burns. Coach, uh, both these teams 3 0 coming in this game. We thought it was in a big, good competition. What do you think so far? You know, we played a great game and got a big turnover, and our offense played great, our defense played great. Hey, some our kids came ready to play today, and I'll give them credit. Uh, you guys were looking for your linebackers to be more aggressive today. Do you think they're accomplishing that so far today? They're getting there. They're still not where they need to be, but we'll get them there. And we had a couple of new D-bats starting today. Uh, how do you think they're doing? You know, I think we've done a good job. They, they, the one number one's got loose for them a couple times and hurt us, but I think in general, you know, they've done a pretty good job. And uh, we know Mountain Sack can make comebacks. Are you worried about that going into the second half? I'm always worried about it. we got to just 0-0 zero, zero and concentrate on winning this football game in the second half. All right, Coach, thank you so much. Well, we heard it, Corey. I mean, Coach Burns, Richie, is, is really truthful with you down there. He knows that Mount Sack can come back. And I like that, Richie. You've been down on the field. Richie, i got to ask you, you asked Coach Burns if those linebackers were more aggressive and everything else. You've been out here for three games. What do you think when you look at those linebackers on the field? I think they're doing a much better job of being more aggressive, but like Coach Burns said, I think they could be more aggressive. All right, well, we'll see if they take Richie's word and if they're a little more aggressive when they go in there. Richie's going to be back with an interview. Or Avery. Or Avery. Well, both of them here better at halftime. So let, let me make it simple. Okay. Better come back for an interview. Could you guys hear Corey Nealon? Yes, they oh, can. Oh, yeah, I just want to make sure, you, you know. And, and you know what, Mark? This is truly a small world because Malik Abdul, Hawk and Jamon Jones played AAU basketball together on the same team. Well, really, when you you talk to the parents, I think this is the interesting thing, why I miss not having more of the parents at halftime, is you really find these connections from players that one grew up in California, one grew up in Florida, they play certain sports here and there, and Corey, it's rivalries for all their lives, and you think, wait a minute, you, yeah, you live on different sides of the country, and you guys well, know well, each other. Actually, both these guys. Yeah, we, we talk about that. These guys, Jam Jones was from Federal Way, Washington. Seattle is for a hawk, and again, these guys just know each other. They know where to come to school at. As you know, what we're gonna get those halftime stats. I may leave you and have Avery come on up here, or Richie come on up here to read the halftime stats. One of the two is gonna come up and hang out with you and read the stats. And we also have some highlights for you Yeah, and one coming of the two up. is going to get an interview, too. We're ready. Let's go. And then Corey Nealon will take off for a little while right after the highlight reel. And as we look at Kane Wilson, the first touch, that run was excellent.
This made it 14 to nothing. It's a 38-yard touchdown run by Wilson. You don't realize how big he is. You don't realize how big he is until you get up there and, and, and try to tackle him. On this mud kick, again, Fullerton is famous for short kicking it, pooch kicking it. You had two guys down there. Uh, Brian Terry came up with was uh, Kirkpatrick, Andre Kirkpatrick, and here's another pass to Darius Simpson. What made this one special is the rush came from Mount Sac. Wilson stepped up in the pocket. Simpson didn't play the first couple games, limited, came back last week, made a good catch at the knees. And here's Ladarius Skelton running again for 50 yards. It was a designed play to move everybody to the right side. He takes off one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker on the left side. You'll take that advantage. Mongole being chased by Cameron Proctor. Here he was, pushed after the throw. And that touchdown pass was called back because he was across the line of scrimmage. Demetrius Scott walked into the end zone. Fullerton got away with one. All right, guys, we're going to take it back down to the sideline where we have, well, we're going to talk to somebody. Okay, maybe not, not yet. So, again, you see those highlights there as you, Fullerton has it 42-7. to seven. We all came into this game thinking Fullerton, ah, their defense may be not playing as well as they could be playing because of those linebackers and some miscommunication between the defensive secondary. The offense really played well. This system is playing well. We didn't really know or did, we may not have known if their offense was really that good, but it is. And the defense has really picked up against Mount Sac. Mount Sac played three opponents, not to the level of Fullerton, Mount Sac, really not to the level of the opponents of College of the Canyons either. So Fullerton really played the tougher schedule. And so Fullerton comes in very well coached. Not a good week of practice either for the Hornets is what we've been told. And you were worried that they come in maybe flat, maybe a little lackadaisical. No, no, not really. 42 to 7, they came in and played well. And they're trusting their coaching staff and being in the correct, play, correct place in the correct position. Okay. And that's really the difference on defense because Mount Sac, very prolific, very aggressive offense out there, and they've really been stymied in that first half of play. So we're getting ready here at halftime. Uh, Corey's going to leave me for a little while. Richie's going to come up here in the booth with me. And uh, Richie, we're going to get you on the air here and talk about the stats, talk a little about this game. We're going to turn around and look at the camera here, Richie. Right behind you. I I'm getting you all ready, Richie. I'm going to make you a television <laughs> star. Watch out for Corey right behind you. I'm going to give you the stats and let you go with them, but uh, just let everybody know what happened in that first half. All right, Mart. So, uh, like we said, a uh, lot of passing for the Hornets as well as a good rushing game for them so far today. We thought coming in this game, you know, the Hornets don't have too much of a rushing game. But as we can see from the stats, Ladarius Skelton, he's got 87 yards, and he's only the quarterback. He's averaging eight yards a carry. Gerald Hewlett, he has 12 carries for 33 yards. He's averaging two and a half. Kane Wilson, even just with his five carries, has 45 yards, averaging nine. His longest is 38. Ladarius Skelton, though, with that 57-yard run, which is really a difference maker. And then we got the receiving core for the Hornets. They are some of the best, as Coach Griffin, or Coach Griffin likes to say, number one receiving core in the entire United States, and they do not disappoint. They do not disappoint every week that uh, Fulton Hornets receiving core coming in big. We got Gerald Hewlett, he's got eight yards and averaging 2.6. Robert Johnson's got eight yards, averaging, well, he's only got one reception, so his average is eight. Grossman's got 45 yards. Manny Weathers got seven yards. Hoffman's got 27 yards, and Darius Simpson has 63 yards. So that receiving core for the Hornets coming up big as they do every week. And then for the Mount Sac Mounties, Mounties yeah. uh, they got Jaye Men Mon Javier 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 Magla. 
Mangala. Mandela. Javier Mandela. He's 12 for Mandalay. I'm getting a bunch of different. Javier Mandalay. I think I got that right. Uh, he's 12 for 21 with 176 yards, one touchdown. No interception so far, which makes me point out uh, the Hornets having trouble with turnovers early on in the season. So far today, none. So that's surprising. We were asking, that's something we asked the Coach Burns about on the coaches show. Uh, they had a couple fumbles against Cerrito, against College of the Canyon and against Cerrito. So we asked him during practice what he was going to do to turn that around. And obviously what he did worked. We don't know exactly what it is, but it's working as they have not fumbled the ball or turned it over at all today. So like I was saying, Jaev Mandele. Javier Javier Mandele. 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 Uh, Mandele. Javier Mandele. There you go. 12 for 21, 176 yards. Rushing, they have Hakeem Masse. He's got five attempts for 29 yards, averaging 5.8. His longest was nine. And then they got a couple of other running bats in here. Well, not running bats, but other guys who have made rushes. Only one attempt for all of them. Uh, some of them only for negative yards, which is not very good, including Mondale himself. He's got three attempts for minus four yards overall, which is not good for the Mounties. And then for receiving, they're really only targeting one receiver, Emeterius Scott. He's got seven uh, completions for 108 yards, averaging 15 yards at a completion with his longest being 40. So they're probably going to come out and look to target him a lot more in the second half. The Hornets have 19 first downs so far, which they haven't really needed because a couple of turnovers on defense put them right near the goal line, allowing for some easy scores. They have 166 passing yards, which interestingly enough, Mount Sack has more passing yards than the Hornets going into the second half, which the scoreboard wouldn't really tell you that, as they are up 42-7 to and in going into the third quarter. The Mounties, what's been their big problem so far today, four interceptions on, well, for them, the Hornets have, I guess you could say. And so they're going to look to cut back on those if they want to make a comeback in this game, as we already talked about. That's a very good possibility that they can come back out stronger in the second half. Because this really isn't the Mounties team we saw on paper. Much like that last game we did last night, a uh, high school game, which you can't really compare the two, but on paper, it looked like it was going to be a blowout and it ended up being a really close game. And the team who looked not as great on paper ended up winning that game. So the stats really don't tell you everything. It's really the teams that you play and how you play against them. So the possession time overall so far, the Mounties got 13 minutes, 21 seconds. And the Hornets have 16 minutes and 8 seconds. So not too big of a difference in the possession time, just the yards rushing is really where the difference is. The Hornets have 165 yards rushing total, while the Mounties only have 41. So if they want to come back in this game, they're definitely going to need to pick up their run game. Well, I'm interested to see what had happened with the penalties in this game when you think about it, because the Mounties have been over-penalized in this game compared to the Hornets. See, so yeah, I'm looking at the stats. The Mounties got 10 penalties for 98 yards, which is a whole touchdown if you think about it. Uh, whereas the Hornets only have three penalties for 40 yards. Well, and really when you think about the penalties, I mean, Richie, on the one play, they had a touchdown that was returned because what you had were offsetting penalties. You know, Mongole, who went over the line of scrimmage, thought he had the touchdown. Then you had roughing passer against the Hornets. Corey and I sort of contend there shouldn't have been a roughing the passer penalty. Once you go past the line of scrimmage, you're no longer a passer. You're yes. a thrower, and it was a not really a late hit it was simultaneously and we think there shouldn't have been that flag against the hornets but at this stage you accept that but that still takes things away and so when you look at what the mounties have it's not only just that you get the 10 penalties for 98 yards but it's when you get those 10 penalties as you know watching any sport yeah. can kill you in a game you could get three penalties but if three touchdowns are taken back Everybody could say you only had three penalties, but you lost 21 points. Yeah, Mark, that makes a big difference. Like you said, uh, that touchdown that got, got pulled back, I do I do agree with you and Corey. You can't really have a rough in, rough in the passer once the quarterback scrambles, like will go, goes past the line of scrimmage. So like you, you, he uh, releases his quarterback privileges, I guess you will, and he becomes a runner. So I think, yeah, the late hit, it was simultaneous, like you said, but there's really nothing you can do. 
still worked out for on the Hornets' favor as that ball got pulled back. That touchdown never happened, and it didn't end up happening. So really big penalty on the Mounties, and that's something going to have to fix going into this next half. Yeah, we know that the officials are going to err on the side of caution so that players don't get hurt. So if you think somebody is an unprotected player and he gets hit the way he got hit, you go, okay, we had another flag that was roughing the passer down there. I called it, and Corey turns around and looks at me and goes, that's not roughing the passer, it's another penalty. When we saw it on the replay, even the Mount Sack people standing behind us said, that's not a flag. That was a bad, and then they all started laughing. They go, well, if your mount's out, fact, yeah, it was a flag, but if you, and I knew what they meant. It's like, okay, if I didn't care about the game, it would be a flag that should get picked up because, again, we know the officials are watching to see what happens on the sideline. We got six minutes to go before the second half starts here. Richie, this is one of those games. I've been around a lot of Mount Sac games. This is your first year around the Mount Sac games. And I have seen games like this where next thing you know, a Hornet team or a Mount Sac team, who's ever in front, feels like we got the game won. It's okay. We're up by 30. And then next thing you know, in the third quarter, that opposing team scores 28 points. And then you look at the scoreboard and you go, wait a minute, it's 42 to 35. Weren't we winning 42 to seven? You can't, if you're a Hornet fan, expect the Hornets just to win this game. And if you're a Mountie fan, you can't say, we lost. If you're a Mountie fan, you're gonna say, it's gonna be tough. But if we can pick up 21 points and give up nothing in this third quarter, then you're right sitting there. Game. Yeah, it's 42 to 28. It's a 14 point game going into the fourth quarter and you got all the momentum on your side. Yeah, like I was talking to Coach Burns on there, as you wanted me to mention to him, as the Mounties are known to make comebacks. And he said he's not, he is definitely afraid, not afraid, but he is kind of worried that they could possibly come back. So he's going to have his guys come out, keep competing at 100% like they do all game, quick offense, quick defense, keep the Mounties on their toes, and hopefully keep them from scoring too much here in the third quarter. Well, Avery, I know you're down the field. When you grab Phil Austin, which you're going to do right now as they walk in there, Avery, just ask him one thing. How does he make sure his defensive backs don't get cocky and just look for picks when they come on the field being up so high? So Avery's going to grab Phil Austin as they get ready to come back here. Richie, if you want to stick around up here with me till Corey out. comes back, you're more than welcome to stay. When Corey comes back and throws you out, <laughs> then you go off. So I think I'll keep Richie up here in the booth with me, if you don't mind. And yeah, uh, you can do a little color commentary. I'll hang around. I love being kicked out by Corey. There you go. Well, you're used to that <laughs> so far. Don't forget to watch the coaches show, Richie, Avery, every week on Sportsnet. As Avery's got Coach Phil Austin down there. I see you guys walking over. Hey, Avery, let me know and ask Phil about that whole thing, how you keep your defensive backs in check from getting cocky and looking for interceptions. All right, Mark, I'm here with Coach Phil Austin. Coach, how do you keep your defensive backs from getting too cocky and just looking for interceptions? Well, they are a little cocky, but we kind of like that. I want them to stay aggressive. We don't play the score. We work on the things that we need to work on, tackling, communicating, uh, all the coverages that we do, our adjustments and, and stuff like that. We make sure we do that and clean it up in the second half. And speaking of adjustments, what kind of adjustments are you going to be looking to make here in the second half? Not too many. We just got to see, you know, the, the quarterback might be out. Um, we're not going to change anything that we do. We do what we do, and uh, we let other teams adjust to us. All right, thanks, Coach Austin. Back up to you guys. Avery, before you go away and, and, and don't walk away so far, you've been down there in the field with Richie. What's, how outstanding is our defense in this game today against a very good Mount Sac football team? Well, they've done pretty well, only holding them to seven points right now. Uh, Mount Sac usually puts up around 45 or so, and they, put, and they hold their defenders, or they hold the opposition down to about 19. So already we've exceeded that. Uh, Offensively as well, uh, the Hornets have run way more than two yards, which is all that the Mounties have allowed in their first three games. So this has already been exciting, and the defense has come with a lot of intensity. Over here on the sideline, you can see the energy is up. Everyone's talking. Uh, Kane's even over here hyping up the defensive players every time he's out, uh, and, they're, and they're coming out to switch. For Avery, well, we're going to let you go. I'm going to keep Richie till Corey comes back, so you're going to stay down there for yourself for a while. Rich is going to stay up here in the booth. We'll be back to you in the second half, Avery, as it should be an exciting second half of community college football here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Don't forget, 
Hornet Football on SportsNetUSA.net is brought to you by Miller Toyota of Anaheim. Save with new car specials with factory rebates of $2,000 on select 2017 Corollas, including the Land, LE, and the Special Edition model. On the web, it's MillerToyotaOfAnaheim.com. Located at the 91 in Euclid, Miller Toyota of Anaheim supports high school sports, community college sports, and most of all, education. Don't forget zombie donuts. Oh, I tell you what, guys, you wake up in the morning, especially Sunday, you're looking for a little, you know, that Sunday football and that special feeling. Well, what better thing to do? Get up early, roll over to zombie donuts, buy a dozen, get that big old gallon of milk. Don't invite any friends over because you won't have any donuts before you get a chance. Eat at least 10 of those donuts by yourself and then save two for Monday. And you're all set here on Zombie Donuts, proud sponsors of sports at USA.net. Remember Zombie Donuts, they do wild things during Halloween. So if you've got a Halloween party coming up, you don't know what to do, head on over to Zombie Donuts, put in a special order of donuts and tell everybody, hey, sportsnetusa.net and the Fullerton College TV department sent me over here, said, you do some crazy things with these donuts. I want to see the Richie and Avery donut, what they look like here on Sportsnet USA.net. I want, that'd be one wild it looking would be, donut. It would be a crazy looking donut. You know, it what? might just be the cookies and cream donut. Uh, I'll tell you what, it'd be some donut with you know, if it was the Ryan Osborne donut, it'd be oh, one yeah. big fat head yeah. with bacon all over it. <laughs> You're definitely right, Mark. That is his favorite one. That's that would be Ryan Osborne. Ryan will be back with us next week as we head to Moore Park. That game will be audio only, at least as of right now. That's the way we're looking at it. That will be next week here on on SportsNetUSA.net. But before we get to Moore Park, we got to finish this game as we hit for the second half. It's the Mounties, the Hornets, here on SportsNetUSA.net. The Mounties defer, so they will get the kickoff. I'm going to look at you. You love the game. How important is it? to be able to get some points on the board the first time you touch the ball in the second half as a Mountie. It'll be hugely important, Mark. I was just about to mention how important this, thir this third quarter is going to be for the Mounties. They have to at least put up maybe two touchdowns if they want to stay in this game. Not saying they have to, but it'd be nice for them if they can get two touchdowns on the board, go into that fourth quarter only down by a touchdown or two, and it make it really easy on them. But yeah, like I mentioned, maybe this was all part of their plan. Maybe they wanted to be down and out. And coming to this the second half, take the first kickoff and uh, score and just don't stop from there. Well, we'll see what happens with the Hornets. They are all tuned up on the sideline. They're smiling as big as Avery is down on the sideline right now. But I tell you what, they need to get Avery. They need to stay into this game because if they don't, they're going to be in a little trouble here in the second half. The Mounties are going to get the ball to start off this second half. Chandler's going to be back deep. Chandler making a couple mistakes, uh, maybe not mistakes, but uh, interesting choices in the first half with some of his returns, like that one that he kind of bobbled in the, uh, not bobbled in the end zone, but didn't feel too clean in the end zone and then decided to take it out, didn't get too far. So you, you're going to be, Rich is going to be telling you what that defensive lineup looks for, like, like for the Hornets here in the second half when they come on the field. Corey Nealon will be back up later. So we'll get ready as we kick off the second half here on SportsnetUSA.net. Chandler goes back deep, takes it at the goal line, looks for an opening, stutter step. Stutter step helps him nothing. He was doing a two-step and the Hornets said, let's have a little do -si do and drop him at the 15. Yeah, Joshua Jeffrey there to make the tackle. Did a great job of getting his the defender who was on him out of his way and able to come up and make that tackle, keeping uh, the runner from going too far. So they mark him down at the 19. So it looks like the defensive line for the Hornets will be Joey Noble, Oscar Verdeno, Montre Bonner. Stametti back in a quarterback. Takes it himself, tries to turn the corner. He does, gets taken out at the 25. As well as Jamichael Moore. So Stametti. Gets the 
it's a gain of six on the play. Stamedi looks over the Hornets, come back on a blitz. Stamedi trying to throw it over to Jackson, throws it out wide. Yeah, wide throw. But uh, for the linebackers for the Hornets, we got Devin Hester, we got Cody Darrow, as well as Caleb Johnson, and we'll get the D-bats in a second. So it's gonna be big. Third down, they've got a second across the way, but it's third, it's third down along six. Stamedi looks over, we get third down, we get a little motion over here, just a flinch. And you see Chris Jackson, Ball just start. give it that Number little 24. shoulder thing, Five Richie, as you get those defensive backs for the Hornets. So Davion Bullet, the defensive back who was on that receiver who made the false start. Over on the other side of the field, we got David Richardson, as well as David Farmer, who is one of the safeties, the other safety being Jacob Jones. And there we get just a little, just a little body movement though there, Stumetti now. Back to third down and 10, goes back. Here comes the pressure. Nobody's on him. Steps up, throws over the middle of the field. Finally, Stamedi gets the ball in the money. That is his second completion of the year. Stamedi limited as a quarterback. Gets enough for a first down, and the Mounties are on the move. David Farmer, the defensive bat there, coming up to make that tackle. Unable to wrap him up. We know the Hornets had a little bit of trouble with that early on in the game. And you see Stametti step up on this, Rich. He has a chance to take it himself, but finds the receiver open, throws it down the field. First down and 10. Goes back, throws it to Coleman on a quick little stop pattern with a gain of five on the play. Great job that time by David Richardson. Able to get him down as go while he's flying by him on the coverage. Second down. So Stametti comes out once again. Hands it off to Massey. Massey goes up in the middle, right off center. Gets a gain of four. It's gonna bring up a third down and two. You know, the Hornets the Hornets defense really looks like uh, some Hornets out there. As soon as that guy got through the tackle box, he got surrounded and swarmed by a bunch of defenders. Third down and two. Stametti looks over. Jackson out wide to the left. Elliott in the slot on the left-hand side. Coleman out wide to the right. Stametti goes back, flips it over there, takes it. Missed tackle once again that's hurt the Hornets all day long on a big run down the field right there by Chris Hunter, the tight end. And the tight end gets away and gets down the field, but it's the missed tackle on him, Richie, that allows that big gain. Yeah, we keep seeing these defensive bats flying past the people they're supposed to be covering, just trying to go for wrap-ups at the hips and not able to completely get them and bring them down. And it's uh, resulted in a couple of big plays for the Mounties. First down and 10, down to the 20. Jackson out wide to the left. Elliott out wide to the right with Coleman. The big tight end who just pulls that one in, Chris Hunter on the left-hand side. Stametti looks over the defense. Trey Elliott in the backfield. Elliott tries to pick it up. Jackson just tries to hold on to it. He should have been six foot four. He'd have pulled that in. And not even six foot four, just a little bit taller than what he was. He was able to get his hands around it and tip it back towards himself. See but it right here, Richie, and Stametti just throws it high and outside on that play. Yeah, off the fingertips, almost able to reel it in there while going out of bounds, which would have been pretty impressive. Chris Jackson only 5'10". Stametti says, second down and 10. I'll get it to you in the next play. Looks over the defense. The Hornets coming up on a full-out blitz. Stametti finds Coleman. Coleman's right there to haul it in. Should be enough for a first down. See where they mark it at as he gets across the 10 to about the eight. So if you look here on the replay, David Richardson actually doing, getting done what they were trying to do with these wrap-ups while flying by people, but this time actually able to get his arms around his waist and bring him down. So it'll be first and goal for the Mounties with 12-18 and they're doing what we said they needed to do to feel like they're back in the game. They're moving down the field. Yeah, they came out aggressive and are already within the red zone. Trey Elliott in the backfield with Stametti. Shotgun formation, first and goal from the nine. Coleman and Elliott out wide to the right. Jackson out wide to the left. Hunter, the big tight end in the slot on left-hand side. Stametti steps back. We get a flag on the play. Ball start, number six, 
Five yard penalty. Coleman just Still first down. gives it that little flinch move again. Another one of them penalties for the Mounties that brings their total up to 11 so far today. And that could be a painful penalty. Yeah, moves them back. It's still first and goal. So Jackson goes to the left. Elliott's going to be in the slot on the left-hand side. Coleman stays out wide to the right. Now you pull that tight end. Chris Hunter back to the line of scrimmage. Trey Elliott in the backfield. Shotgun formation for Stametti. He goes back. He keeps it himself. Follows Trey Elliott in. Tries to get the outside. Does he get across? He's just a little short. Nice running play by the quarterback. We get a flag on the play. Hope it's... Hope it's not another costly penalty on the mountain. So you Stay watch here. it there, Richie, as he pulls it down, takes it, goes off a of center himself. Yeah, Titula Chapman out here, number 76, doing a great job of leading him almost all the way to the end zone. And Trey Elliott, the running back, is the one that gets called for holding on the play. That's what opens up that hole on the left-hand side, that little quick grab. So once again, the Mounties go backwards. He had two, two great plays, on, and they moved forward, but somehow they're moving, well, with the penalties, they're moving backwards here. Now it's first and goal from the 20. Stamitti goes back, flips it over, looking for Elliott. Elliott looking for the inside post. Stamitti throws it to the outside, incomplete pass. Second down and 20 for the Mounties. We started the second half. It's the Hornets, 42, the Mounties, 7. You're watching Hornet football on Sportsnet USA.net. If I'm not mistaken, the Mounties were actually inside the 10 yard line at one point during this drive, but here they are now at the 20, just barely maintaining red zone uh, pressure on the Hornets. Second and goal. Stametti comes back, feels the pressure. The Hornets have him boxed in. We get another flag. Stametti trying to run for his life, flips it up in the air, throws it to Jackson off his hand but that flags in the middle of the field and normally we know what that is. We'll wait and see what the official calls it. 15 yard penalty. So it's a personal foul against the Mounties and we're gonna go backwards even more. And it's, you're right, Richie, they started first and goal at the eight. And now here they are back at what appears to be the 35 yard line and it'll be a second and very long for the Mounties. So they move it back and it's going to be second and goal now from the 35, 27 yards backwards they have moved because of penalties. Yeah, three penalties on three plays for the Mounties and it has moved them back to considerable, considerable distance from the goal line. Coleman out wide to the left, Jackson out wide to the right with Elliott, Trey Elliott in the backfield. Stametti goes back looking to do something almost has it picked excellent defensive play for the Hornets so the Hornets almost pick it off and go the other direction it's going to bring a third and goal from the 35. yeah Taj Jones there on the pass breakup able to get his arms inside the arms of the receiver and deflect that ball before he's able to bring it in for the catch Stamitti the backup quarterback thrown into action, goes back, quick three foot drop, three step drop, runs away from it, now he's gotta pull it down, looked like he was over the line of scrimmage, flips an incomplete pass, and now we get a flag, because I thought he threw it at the 31. Let's watch on this one, Richie, let's see where he throws this ball from, he rolls around, come back across, he's at the 35, four pass, he's at the 33 when he throws the football. That's a five yard the penalty football. from the spot of the foul, loss of down, fourth down. So it's a illegal forward pass, they mark off the penalty and you lose the down, so the backup quarterback moves it back again. A lot of yards there for the Hornets defense, almost completely on penalties. So it's at the 35, it was an incomplete pass. Loss of down, makes it fourth down, so they're gonna punt it away. So they started at first and goal at the eight. They end up with kicking the ball into the end zone with 10.32 to go here in the third quarter. With 10.32 in the third quarter, it's the Hornets, 42. 
the Mountie 7. You're watching Hornet football on Sportsnet, USA.net, in conjunction with Fullerton College TV. Richie Melgoza, myself, Corey Nealon, wandering around the stadium right now. I don't know, did he get in the car and leave? Because I won't need a ride home from somebody. Maybe he went back for some more zombie donuts. He might have an Avery Jordan down on the sidelines letting us know how everybody's feeling here on Sportsnet, USA.net. So we're going to see this Hornets offense for the first time here in the third quarter. Joshua Jeffrey now in a running back. Kane Wilson hands it off to Jenry. Goes to the outside. We're going to get holding on that play, Rich. And I tell you what, it looked like a love fest on a dance thing. As Muhammad Jefferson said, look, I'm six foot four, 300 pounds. I went to Fullerton High School. And I'm, watch this, watch, watch, watch Muhammad. He's trying to hide here. Six foot four, yeah. 300 pounds. There's the hold right there, Muhammad. Yeah, I could easily see that hold there, Mark. Is Zara. You're, you're a little hard to hide when you're six foot four, 300 pounds on the offensive line. Yeah, and the white jersey being pulled made it pretty obvious as well. So it's gonna bring up first down and 20 for the Hornets. Kane Wilson looks over the defense. Joshua Jeffrey in the backfield with him. Kane Wilson goes back. Looking for Robert Johnson to clear out. Robert Johnson clears out. Oh, lays out! Completely on his side, goes to his left, pulls it in, and Robert Johnson, watch this. Again, Robert Johnson goes down. Kane Wilson has only one person in mind. Robert Johnson did it at College of the Canyons and does it again here at Chappelle Stadium on Sportsnet, USA.net. Kane Wilson says, let's try it again. Robert Johnson says, I got it. He's out of bounds oh, on that one. Very close over there. Let's see if we can get that one on a replay. It looks like he might have got one foot in. You watch Robert Johnson again. Kane Wilson locks on him immediately. Robert Johnson's going to go to his side, lay out, catch it, and pull it into his body so he has control of the football. You know, I don't want to take anything away from that catch. It was a spectacular catch by Robert Johnson. But if Kane throws that one a little bit shorter, he hits him in stride. And Johnson, with a lot of green in front of him, could have been a touchdown. But still, great throw, great catch. Second down and 10. Johnson goes out wide to the left now. Kane Wilson looking over. Second down and 10 at the 45. Simpson goes in motion. They throw it back to Justin Mannyweather, the speed derman. Looks at he sidesteps one on a nice little move. Stutter step. Steps inside. Oh, the VW's got some speed with him and a little accuracy as he goes back inside. <laughs> Jeffrey gets it up the middle, so Richie's going to go back down to the sideline. Corey Nealon's back up here. So Richie is going to go back down and take over sideline duties. Corey Nealon's back here. So the Hornets on the move again. Second down 11 at the 20. Joshua Jeffrey in the backfield for the Hornets. Kane Wilson at quarterback. Trying to move Robert Johnson wide to left. Another spectacular catch. Joshua Jeffrey stops, cuts inside. Nice little run, not a big gain on that, but you watch him go out to the left. He's cut off at the gap. He finds an opening, cuts back in the middle. You watch it here in the replay as Jeffrey's going to take it himself, goes out, gets cut off by the defense on a nice defensive push, finds the opening, brings it back in, and gets a gain of three on the play. Third down and seven. At the 18, Kane Wilson looks over. Dree Simpson goes out wide to the left. Jeffrey in the backfield. They hand it off to Jeffrey. Jeffrey goes straight off the tackle, tries to stay on his feet, pulled down just at the last second on a nice tackle over there by Travis, who makes it just a little short. We'll watch as he goes off left tackle one more time. Fourth and one for the Hornets. They're running the ball with Joshua Jeffrey. Kane Wilson said, you almost got it. He goes up the middle. Boy, it's going to bend on the spot if he gets that first down. I want to thank Richie Melgoza for being on the air with me. Keeping me company here at halftime. Corey Nealon's back. And they call a timeout. 
so Corey can get back on the air here on Sportsnet, USA.net. I saw you ruling the roost like the ruler of a kingdom, sending your minions back down where they belong here on Sportsnet, USA.net. You don't want me to answer that one. Corey, once again, Robert Johnson lays out, stretches out, and makes another dynamic catch. You saw it when you were walking up here. He seems to now be that young man you said he would be at the College of the Canyon game as a wide receiver. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy that it just, he's a guy that just continues to impress week by week. The Hornets come up just a little short for a first down. So it really did depend on the spot. They didn't get the spot they needed with 8.08 to go here in the third quarter. It's the Hornets, 42. The Mounties, 7 on Sportsnet, USA.net. Last time the Mounties had the ball, well, it was first the goal at the 8. And then there was a penalty, a penalty, a run, a penalty, a pass, a penalty, a penalty, and a penalty. Mark, when I was walking up, it was first and goal at the 8. When we got up here, it was fourth down and 55. I formation, we get a flag on the play. So the Mounties. Jacob Jones on a tackle, number 20, Walker, the runner. Andre Walker in an I formation. And you see Andre the Walker. I formation, Andre Black. Walker gets it. It's number 53 of the Goes defense. Left Five yard penalty, remains first down. So it's offsides against the horn. It'll be a first down and five. And Mark, they said 5'3", Samuel Davis. He's offensive lineman. That was actually Corey Rose, D tackle. He's joined by Cameron Rock, uh, Proctor on the interior. And Fullerton's gonna have too many men on the field. We get a timeout before. Out. Yeah, somebody was listening to That's it the too. first time out of the second I mean, that was sort of funny. When it, you heard it, I heard it. Corey says there's too many guys on the field and down in the booth we heard timeout. Boy, everybody listens and watches SportsNetUSA.net. Got an iPad down there. And we'll go ahead and reset that defense. On the interior, Jermichael Moore and Corey Rose comes out. Cameron Proctor stays in. Oscar Bergueno and Kareem McDonald on the outside. Caleb Johnson is a near side linebacker, 32. As you just saw, Tom Deep there. Cody Darrow is a middle linebacker, 49. Outside is 54 is Devin Hessler. Far side cornerback number 27 you see coming there is going to be Dewan Dorsey out of Richmond, Virginia. You also have a new cornerback on the near side. That's number 18, Ibrahim Konati, also out of Richmond, Virginia. One from Northwest High School, the other from L.C. Bird High School. So a lot of Virginia talent. Bonner, those two, along with Hewlett. I've never been to Virginia. Nice place. Okay. Andre Kirkpatrick, number 34, you see out there is the safety. And Jacob Jones, number 42, the other safety. And we missed one. Actually, no, we did. We got Kareem McDonald. We missed Kevin Robertson, 6'2 freshman out of Silver Spring, Maryland, Blair High School. Coleman out wide to left. Only one wide receiver, wide left. Run it right back up the middle. Bouncing off this, making a nice little move right there is Andre Walker. As he bounces off the middle, comes to the outside, Andre get a gain Walker, of the, the play, but we have flags. Penalty Once again, down. offsides against it, the Hornets. It looked like another offside. Offsides, number nine of the defense. Five-yard penalty results, first down. You know what? There was about four blue helmets in the neutral zone. So that's going to give a first down to the Mounties. Sandre so Walker is going to be the deep back. Will Height is the up back for the Mounties. I formation. First down and 10. Stametti goes back. Throwing it deep to Coleman. Coleman's trying to run underneath it. Can't. We get a flag. <laughs> wow. That's horrible. Okay, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that out loud, but that was not a good call. Yeah, it was a horrible call. Ibrahim Kanadi was right there on the coverage. He didn't move. That arm there was not preventing him from catching anything. He had as much right to the ball Pass as Pass interference, the number 18 of the defense. 15-yard penalty. As you see him there. First down. Yeah, that's not good. And you know what? You see a couple former Hornets down there on the field, Mark. I wonder how they feel about this Mount Sac game as they're putting on them in 42-7. to seven. We may find out. 
See if somebody grabs a former Hornet on the sideline and finds out what they're feeling about this game. First down and 10 because of the penalty. Coleman once again says, hey, if I got that one, let's go wide again. Stametti says, well, I'm going to keep it myself. I'm going to cut the outside. Nice little stutter step at the line of scrimmage. Freezes a defensive linebacker and gets enough for a Beautiful seven-yard gain. Yeah, the safety had to come up and make the tackle. Kareem McDonald on the outside. You see him get taken in. He didn't set the edge right there on the give. Cody Darrow, he plays middle backer. He's got to get there quicker. Stametti throws to Jackson on the right-hand side. Jackson across the 50, down to the 48. Let's move the chains for the Mounties. Dorsey on the stop. In comes for Dorsey. Brian Terry out of Atlanta, Pope High School. You see the rollout by Stametti. Nice job. As you said, in Jackson, precise route. Stametti, this time has a knocked out of his own hands, has to pick it up and run, gets taken down, will give a sack on the play. He was going back originally to throw that ball. So you got your pick of Number Proctor, 14, Mount Sack. Robertson, Cordero. Play. He has to sit out one play. Credit for the sack. So first one there is Cameron Proctor. Give it to him, big number 99. Corey Rose back in there on the in, in the interior. So that's Steve Nava in at quarterback. Steve Nava hands it off quickly to Walker. So Steve Nava in at quarterback for Mount Sac now. Walker 14 yards. He's the sec team's second leading carrier. Came into the game with 120 yards. He goes off tackle. Nice job. Good seal. Lyman's waiting for somebody. He's turned the wrong way, but luckily, luckily Walker has enough speed to get to the outside. So Nava in for one place. The Medi comes back in, so they're playing rotating quarterbacks here. Walker still at the running back. Oh, so he changed his helmet. Corey's letting me know why Stametti went off the field. Stametti rolls away from the pressure, getting good protection, throwing up there, picked off, interception, and just nice defense. Telegraphed on the play, but good defensive play by the Hornets. Yeah, Jacob Jones kind of baited him into throwing that ball because he was wide open behind the defensive, or behind the linebacker of Devin Hessler. Jacob Jones waited, waited, and waited. Once the ball came up and floated out there, he was there for the pick. So with 5.38 to go here in the third quarter, the Hornets get an interception. It's the Hornets, 42. The Mountie 7 here on Sportsnet, USA.net. First interception by Jacob Jones on the season, and Fullerton in complete control. Watch the replay. There's Stametti. He thinks he's got an open receiver there, and there's Jones right at the last minute flying into your screen. Kane Wilson comes back out. Joshua Jeffrey, the running back with him in the backfield. First down and 10 for the Hornets, right at the 20. They hand it to Jeffrey, trying to cut to the outside. Young man, didn't play a couple games, didn't feel exactly right. Stayed on the sideline. He's feeling good now, so he's back on the field. Jeffrey, the See ball if carrier. he can pick up with Gerald Hewlett left off. Stopped by Benjamin Hawthorne. I, again, Gerald Hewlett, 20 carries, 99 yards at College of the Canyons. Jeffrey, if he gets 20 carries, either one of them gets 20 carries, they're going to get 100 yards each game. Robert Johnson goes out wide to the left. Kane Wilson looks at the sideline, says second down to 10. Give me a play. Jeffrey moves up a little in the backfield. Big second down. Kane Wilson steps back, looks for a little delay, throws it. It bounces as Justin Mannyweather tries to come back. The pass was a little too low. So it's going to bring up a third down and 10 right at the 20. See the Fullerton defense breaking up out of their get together. Kane Wilson looks over. Justin Mannyweather comes over to the right with Robert Johnson. Now Justin Mannyweather runs off the field. I thought he was staying in. Robert Johnson comes out wide to the right. Kane Wilson, a shotgun formation, goes back, has protection, decides to pull it down, throws it, gets hit from behind, ball comes out. Staying with the play mark, Paula Hafoka 
stayed with the play, came all the way from the outside. Watch number 91 not give up on the play. Kane Wilson can run. He decides not to, but Afoka was there to mess up the play. Forces that fumble. And Anthony Rosales got the fumble recovery for the Mounties. So the Mounties get a turnover. The Hornets get the interception, can't move the ball. Kane Wilson gets hit from behind on a beautiful defensive play by the Mounties. They come up with the ball. Let's see now if they can get the end zone. Coleman comes out wide to the left. In the slot is going to be Scott on the right-hand side. Stamitti looks over the defense. Walker in the backfield with him. Stametti drops it. Stametti tries to find it, goes down. Tackle for a loss on the play. Devin Hessler in there with the bad snap. We saw that last night in the high school game with Golden Valley. A lot of muff snaps, bad snaps result into negative plays. Devin Hessler gets his first sack of the season. It's going to bring up a second down and 17 right at the 32. 42 to 7, four minutes to go here in the third quarter. Mount Sack looking for something. Stamitti flips it over, tries to get it there. Nice catch. They're going to mark him down at the 25. I think the Mounties wanted some, Corey, because as the receiver was going down, he was held. Looked like he got hit high. Watch this on here. He's Close gonna go play. On Jacob Jones. On the catch, right there, the down. catch in front of Terry, and there's actually that's Daryl hit to the head. That's going to be 15 yards, unnecessary roughness. Okay, so the Mounties got what they should have received. Personal foul. Illegal helmet contact, number 21. Half the distance to the goal, first down. And they meant number 49, not number 21. Brian Terry makes the tackle. Cody Darrell hits to the head. So that's going to move it down to the 13 with 4.07 to go. And the Mounties have been down there twice now and have come away with nothing. This is really a team that needs to be able to carry something into the next game. They need to get something going right quickly for them. Throws that ball comes out, but it's out of bounds. And I thought for a second, Corey, that Draper was going to actually give it back to the Hornets after he caught it. Ronald Draper catches that and then kicks it. Well, luckily he stepped out of bounds right when he gave it up. Good ball hawking skills by the Fullerton secondary. And that was Brian Terry rips it out, but it was already out of bounds. Coleman goes out wide to left. Jackson in the slot. Draper out wide to the right. Walker. We get flag now. The Hornets came up. Usually you get an offensive lineman move on that. Ball awesome. start. What oh, we ball get. Start. Wow. Yeah, because they Five came yard up. Yeah. Second down. So that's five yards against the Mounties. Move it back with 3.28 to go. A lot of penalties in this third quarter. The game has slowed down. Avery, after this play, we're gonna go right down to you. Mounties look over. Stametti looks over. Coleman out wide to left. Jackson in the slot. Draper out wide to the right. Walker is a running back. Shotgun formation for Stametti. Here comes the Hornets. He's gonna try and outrun the defense. He gets a gain of about six. What you got, Avery? So we were talking with some of the Fullerton College Hornets that were here on the sidelines. New, uh, some of the older players and newer players, they both believe that this game has playoff implications and they definitely feel like they're gonna play them again in the future, guys. And there's a good chance, thanks Avery. There's a good chance they could meet in the playoffs later on this, this season, as long as uh, Mount Sack doesn't lose one more. Stametti, third down and eight. Yeah, you said they play Riverside and El Camino. But on the replay there, Stametti goes down short. Stametti goes back, throws it over to Jackson. Jackson can't haul it in on a low outside pass, incomplete. So it's going to bring up a fourth down and seven with two minutes and 22 seconds to go here in the third quarter. It's the Hornets, 42, the Mountie 7 on Sportsnet, USA.net. Corey, it's really interesting, too, how big this game really plays because El Camino's playing well and Riverside is always deadly. Yeah. This is a big This is a big game for Mount Sac. If they lose for to both those teams, they won't be in the playoffs. 
Mountsack goes back to Medic, trying to find something. Good coverage by the Hornets. He's got to pull it down, throws it the back of the end zone. Incomplete pass. The defensive back stayed at home. They covered, and the down lineman put enough heat on Stametti to throw it incomplete. Turnovers, again, for the Hornets. They get it on four downs. It'll be first down to 10. Watch it on this. The defensive back score, he just stay in coverage. And watch Stametti have a chance to run for the pylon. It's clear sailing if he can receiver gets a block but he doesn't take the chance against Roy Otto and he didn't think he can beat him to the pylon. Ladarius Skelton comes back in at quarterback. Robert Johnson out wide to the right. Robert Downs the third in the slot on the right hand side. Huffman out wide to the left. Skelton shotgun formation. First down and 10, Skelton's gonna take it himself. Following his blockers, Gets a gain of two on the play. So Ladarius Skelton showing his athletic skills. We get a flag again here in the third quarter. Next game for Mount Sac, Mark, against his OCC. Then they have Long Beach. Half an and that's the against Muhammad Second Jefferson. Down. So then you have Long Beach. Then you have El Camino. And you have a replay here as Muhammad Jefferson is there on the right side, does a nice job of sealing. And after the play, and he just, you know, I'll throw somebody while well, the push at the end there. Then they have Chafee, who's always tough. So Skelton takes it, spins away, tries to stay on his feet. We get another flag on this long, enduring Coach Holy Smith says hi. With the young man, the hey, we got a little Second Eldorado down. High School football. And you see the replay here. That's going to go against Jefferson again on the right side, and the big number 70 in blue. Fullerton, Eldorado. With the hold. A little high school football going on behind me. Eldorado High School and Fullerton High School. Nice okay. to see you, Jason. Coach Smith. That was more of a tackle than a hold on Jefferson. So two straight against Muhammad. 42-7. So the Hornets going backwards. Skelton says, wait a minute, wrong direction, guys. We've seen this. When was the last time we seen a 99-yard runner pass? Well, we'll find out right here. Jeffrey comes up, gets hit solid at the five-yard line by a nice Jeffrey tackle carries the ball. by Mount Sack. Jeffrey wearing that number three, that long history, well, 10-year history, wearing number three for the Hornets, Kelvin York. Kenny Turner started that. I'm, I'm just impressed by Mount Sack's schedule. Didn't And then you have Jeffrey there, gets a nice little hole, but better tackle by Mount Sachs, Elijah Guillory. Darius Skelton gets a flag, so it's a freebie. Skelton's going to beat. Robert Johnson says, I got it. Tell oh, he pulls it in. This is two in this game. Now that's a replay we want to see as Robert Johnson has it. You see the, you see the throw. They know they have a free play, so they're throwing it up. He waits. Robert Johnson, watch the initial catch up top. Goes a little bit through his hands, catches it a second time as he's going down for a nice 43-yard pass and catch. So Robert Johnson has shown his skills at College of the Canyons, and they're getting better here at Chappelle Stadium against Mount Sack. It's first down and 10 to 48. Ladarius Skelton says, thank you. My numbers just went up. Looks once again, goes the other side of the field, says, let me throw it to Derese Simpson. He's not there. He says, no, I didn't run that route. Jordan Huffman says, wait a minute, was was that to me? And he, we're going to get another angle on the catch from Robert Johnson straight ahead. He just, look at the hands this young man has. Goes up at its highest point and then comes down with it. They practice catching and receiving after every practice, every single day. Second down and 10 at the 48. Scout. Simpson takes it coming back for that, gets a gain of two at the 50. We're going to go back down to the field, Richie Melgoza. Yes, guys, we talked to Coach Griffin during the coaches' show earlier this week, talking about the great catches his receivers make. And, you know, he says they practice that stuff in practice. He sees them do it all the time, so he's not surprised when they made big plays like that in the game. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Richie. And we got third down and about eight. 
They get jumped at the line of scrimmage. No flag. Skelton says, I got another free winner. Robert Johnson says, oh, I got it. Oh, wait a minute. I got shoved out of bounds. I might as well not catch it. And look at Ladarius Skelton. He, Corey, he turned around and looked at the official like, wait a minute, I had a freebie and I didn't complete that one. What's wrong with me? That's okay, Ladarius. We'll let you get away with one every now and then here on, the on Sports at USA.net. 14 seconds of the here in a very long, foul, trippy, long number third quarter on, on Sports at USA.net. It's the Hornets, 42, the Mountie 7. Here on SportsNetUSA.net in conjunction with Fullerton College TV. And just remember, too, when you talk about all these games, couldn't do it without the wonderful camera work and the technical work behind us here by the TV crew from Fullerton College. They do an outstanding job on all these games. Third down and eight. Skelton looks over, tries to get him to jump. Jeffrey in the backfield with him. Robert Johnson out wide to the right. Simpson in the slot on the right-hand side says, look for me, I might be open. Skelton, last time we get illegal procedure. As Robert Johnson says, watch me take Five. off a little Five too quick. Remains third down. So we'll try again with another flag here in the third quarter on SportsNetUSA.net. So Ladarius Skelton, unofficial stats, four of eight, 50 yards. Kane Wilson, 10 of 16, 186 yards. To go back, here comes the blitz. Tries to go to Johnson. Little tug there, no flag. Nice no call by the official. Tyson Proctor on the coverage. You think that's a nice no call, but that enhanced the defensive back. He pulls him back to gain leverage on Johnson. Almost comes up with the interception. That should have been a penalty there. I know you want to go home. You, I know we, need, we want to run a clock, but that's okay, Mark. Yeah, they're lucky we're not running the time, huh? <laughs> so the Hornets get to midfield. Stagnation sets in. They get stopped right here in the Mounties. So far in the second half, not the glory marches like we saw in that first half of this game. Looking for it, taken, turning to the outside. Catch there, drug down, trying to get away on a really hard driven return by J.D. Moore. And J.D. And Moore working with Jacob Jones. You like both battles, but neither one wanted to give up on that play. And they just does what, did what college football players do. Work hard and make the tackle. As you see the return, Jacob Jones gets there. Actually, that's Cody Darrell who gets there. And they're just fighting. Jones wants to get away at the 20. Darrell's not letting them go. Still got to grab at that jersey. And that's where Jones comes up and finishes up. And that takes us to the end of the third quarter. As we head into the fourth quarter, it's the Hornets, 42, the Mountie 7. You're watching Hornet football on Sportsnet, USA.net, in conjunction with Fullerton College TV. Remember, if I was to buy a Toyota, you were to buy a Toyota, everybody in this booth were to buy a Toyota, there's only one place to go, Miller Toyota of Anaheim. If we're going to get our Toyota tuned up, where else? Miller Toyota of Anaheim. Miller Toyota of Anaheim is a proud sponsor of high school sports, community college sports, but most of all education. And after you do that, we'll Sunday you wake up, you go down, you get your zombie donuts, you sit back, you watch your favorite team, you eat that dozen by yourself, and then when your family wakes up, you go, hey, should we go out to breakfast? Nah, let's stay home. I'm not really hungry. Just make sure you get rid of that box of zombie donuts so they don't know you ate all 12. So let's start the fourth quarter as the Hornets are up 42 to 7 over the Mounties here on Sportsnet, USA.net. New back, Richard Ballard, or excuse me, Malcolm Ballard, goes up the middle. Roy Otto is there to drag him down. Spamedi throws it out to Coleman, and the Coleman takes it at the 30, stays on his feet, gets driven out of bounds. If they give him the 30, that's enough for a first down for the Mounties. Devin Hester's having a nice little game today. That's his fourth tackle. We got one tackle for loss. Linebackers, we're gonna have to ask the coaches, are they improving each game? Coleman out wide to the right, Elliott in the slot. Malcolm Ballard in the backfield with Stametti. First down and 10. Stametti throws it to Coleman, Coleman 
goes back against the traffic, and now he's got white jerseys in front of him. Needs one block. There's one block. Turns the outside, and Corey, even though he gets a first down, the defense made him string it out so he couldn't get outside to go all the way for a touchdown. Good job. I actually, I'm, I'm going to say the defense didn't do a good job on that because there's no way he should have picked up the first down. They were over pursuing and didn't fill their lanes, so they should have cut him off before he was able to pick up that first down. Stimetti says, well, I tell you what, let me throw it to Elliott. He'll go up the field across the 50, down to the 48, and the Mounties all day long have started good drives and then stubbed themselves in the toe. They went to Scott. I gave it to Elliott. Scott catches it on that one. And the replay here is Fullerton just good contain. Coleman to the right. Scott in the slot next to him. Stametti going deep. And once again, you watch this Mountie team be able to make moves, but Corey, they really haven't been able to finish a lot off in today's game. And I'm going to say, is it them or is it the defense? I, I don't it's know if the, the defense approved that much. I think it's the defense who, who Omar Gonzalez now coming in. I think. Stametti goes back, says, I, I'm feeling it right now. And as he flips it out there to Chris Jackson, Chris Jackson gets down, and the Mounties are moving here in the fourth quarter. And it's more the defense. They used to have, used to have this bend, bend but don't break with Casey Mazzotta at the helm. As a replay here, nice job by Jackson, hurdling one player, trying to get to the end zone. He's brought down by the new guy in there, Fullerton, Fullerton running in everybody, Ryan Simpson at the linebacker. And Brian Crooks and Tim Burns just went running down the sidelines and called a timeout. And Corey, it's, it's this thing, it's 42 to seven with 12.48 to go. Tim Burns and Brian Crooks, almost it's this attitude. I've seen this story. Well, the thing is, whether it's first team, third team, fourth team, practice squad, everybody is held to the same expectations. That expectation is we're not going to give up any points. We're, we're going to play strong, aggressive defense, smart defense. And when you don't play smart defense, here comes the first stringers back in there. With Bergueno, Bonner, Noble, Shane Darso now in. Backers from left to right or far side and near side is Johnson, Otto, and Nickel Package with Brian Terry, 21. Number 27 you have out there, far side, Dewan Dor Dorsey, 25, Joshua Fisher. 43 will be Sarah Smith and also Jaquan Hutton out of Chicago. Scott goes out wide to the right. Coleman with him on the right-hand side. Jackson goes out wide to the left. Stametti looks over to the sideline. Shotgun formation, Malcolm Ballard in the backfield with him. First and 10, right at the 15. Mounties want to get on the board. 42 to 14, 12, 48 to go. Game's never over. We'll see what they do. Stametti takes it, cuts up the middle, gets a gain of four, and again, they're down by the goal line. Stametti might be their best runner of the day as he's picking up five and six yards a game. Fullerton's playing softer than they have been earlier in the first quarter, in the second quarter. Coleman on the right, Scott in the slot. Stametti looking, throws it to Scott. Scott comes over the middle, gets down to the four yard line. They're gonna mark him down at the five. I'm gonna say Demetrius Scott is pretty fearless in there going on the inside, just a straight slant route in between three defenders to almost get the first down. He makes the catch. He knows he's gonna get hit, softens the blow by churning so he doesn't take full impact. All us guys who are 5'7 are tough. Third Mark, down and one. Mark's 5'8". <laughs> <laughs> Timeout. Wow. Fullerton. Wow, and I missed it by out. an inch here on Sportsnet, USA.net. But the Hornets aren't an inch away from a victory. It's the Hornets, 42. The Mounties, 7. Here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Next week, more part on Sportsnet, USA. 
Dot net. That's where I wanted to go back. Mount Sac. Yes. So they've got OCC. Yeah. Then they got Long Beach. I think Long Beach is a tougher game than everybody makes it out to be. Long, Long Beach. Long Beach is better. Yeah. Long Beach is really a lot better than everybody gives it. Then they got El Camino. El Camino is good this year. They end the season with Riverside. Oh, you know Riverside. Riverside could be bad, and they're still good. If they could keep something out of the playoffs, you know Riverside would be a spoiler. But Riverside is up there also in the top five. I mean, Mount Sac has a very, very challenging schedule this year on sportsatusa.net. Third down and a foot. I formation. For the Mounties, tight eye formation. Mounties going to hand her right off the left-hand side. Trying to get there and get that first down it was Malcolm Ballard. And Ballard got it. Malcolm Ballard. So with 11.30, here we go as we watch it. Corey, this is a tight oh, eye formation. Straight dive play is what they run there. And he picks up the first down, I'm going to say, by the nose of the football. So it's that, and if you're the Mounties, even if it is a foot short, you're still going for it at this stage of the game. Oh, they got it. It's half, half the length of the football. They're going to continue. It's going to be first down and goal. Wind picking up here at Chappelle Stadium. Wow. What did you do? At halftime, did you Gabby eat some carrots or something? Why is that? Your eyesight. It was half a football. Oh, okay. You know, I give credit where credit is due, unlike others. What? I gave I gave you a 5-8. And it's straight at the middle off tackle, trying to get into the end zone. Just short on that one is Malcolm Ballard. Malcolm right Ballard now. out of Riverside, Ramona High School. Short of the goal. little conversation going on with the official and the staff from Mount Sac. Offsides, defense, half the distance to the goal. That's why it is. Replay first down. So we get offsides against the Hornets. It's going to be first and goal for the Mounties. Last time they were in this situation, all of a sudden penalties started to arise and they went backwards. This time they're looking for that progressive move into the end zone. Tight formation, eye formation, straight up the middle, looking for the big block, and they get the big block and into the end zone. Oh boy, that big lineman, Corey. And right up the middle. Tavita Mo has mowed down the Fullerton, well, all 11. That penalty is going to be declined for offside. And this goes back. You don't feel as nervous as you felt back in 2007. I believe it was 2007 and 2008 when Fullerton oh, played Mount Sac. When some people walked off the air because it was so nerve-wracking. But the, those games, that, that's when you thought nothing was out of the realm of possibility. Even this score here with 11-14 to play, you were still nervous about Mount Sac coming back against Fullerton or vice versa. So now with 11.14 to go, it's the Hornets 42, the Mounties 14. You're watching Hornet football on Sportsnet, USA.net. You know, Tabita Mo, the young man that really led that, six foot four, 380 pounds out of St. John Bosco. Everybody's heard of that high school out of Bellflower. Agile for a big offensive lineman. That's one thing about the Mounties. You watch their offensive line. A little surprised they didn't try to run the ball much more often against the Hornets. They seem to have quickness as an offensive line with big linemen. I'm not talking little guys, big guys that are out there. Well, this defensive front four for the Hornets are, are the best we've seen in a while. Would you say better than last year? For the Hornets? Yeah. Well, I still don't know. Last year was pretty special. 2013 was special. Yeah, we can't get that far yet. A little squib kick right up the middle of the field. Take and slide, giving himself up at the 30-yard line. Nice play, Corey, by Justin Mannyweather, who comes up, gets the ball, doesn't try and do anything with it, just secures it. 
at the 30. Next time, if well, if Mount Sac scores again, if that same play were to happen, I think Manny Weather runs right down the middle. Watch the replay here. Do you really? Yeah, watch the replay. It's going, it's going, it's going. He's coming up at full speed. He's got a block. He makes one step to the left. He's gone. Well, Darius Skelton comes back in at quarterback. Now Justin Franks comes in from running back from Narbonne in for the Hornets. They fake it to Franks. Ladarius Skelton keeps it, gets across the 35. They think the ball came out, but he was called down. So it'll be a gain of five on the play. Break up a second down and five. Runner up the middle, they fake it to Franks. Ladarius Skelton takes it. Robert Johnson goes out wide to the left. Skelton looks over the defense. In there maybe because of his running ability as a quarterback. And Mark, I got a little ahead of myself with the defensive line statement, sorry. Okay. This time, Skelton takes it again. They try to rip the ball out of his hand. He's still on his feet. They're gonna call him down. He finally gets knocked backwards. A gain of two on the play. So it'll bring up a third down and four. Fullerton came in averaging 54.7 points a game in their first three. Mount Sac averaging 47. So Fullerton on their way to getting their averages. Skelton takes it down, third down and three. Right now they just want to run the clock. They don't really care about scoring. They just want the game to end. Wilson out wide to the left. Simpson out wide to the right with Johnson. Franks goes in motion. Ladarius Skelton keeps it himself. Tries to turn the corner, gets to the 40. He's going to be short of a first down. Yeah, I think he got exactly to the 40, and the yard marker is the 40. So it should be a first down. Actually, going to say short of the 40. You watch him here. We'll see. And the, oh, that's a first oh, down. Oh, they gave him a first. Yeah, they okay. did. Here's the replay wow. mark above head. You'll see where he steps out right in front of Tim Burns. Yeah, he got the first. Looks back over. So Justin Frank, the freshman, five foot nine, 190 pounds. Now the running back for the Hornets. Simpson out wide to the right. Justin Mannyweather with him on the right hand side. Ladarius Skelton keeps it himself, shrugs off one, goes down off the top of his head like a gummy ball. When you put those nickels in and they drop on the ground, bounces up. Made by number two. Here's the replay. Nice job of shrugging out a one tackle. Jaquez takes him down at the knees. Second down and four. Frank's back there. Johnson out wide to the right. Just a Manny where they're with him. They're going to keep running it. They look it over here on the left-hand side. Kendra Wilson says, I'll go down five. Throw it to me. Finally give it to Frank. Frank get through first down for the Hornets. Frank saw one carry, one touchdown for 50 through 54 yards in his eyesight. You see the replay here. Has good blocking up front. And touchdown saving tackle. Right there by Isara. Wilson out wide left. Simpson out wide to the right. Robert Johnson far to the right. Frank goes now from right to left. Skelton in the backfield. Skelton keeps it himself. Skelton looks for that one block. Corey, it's a foot race. He can out right to the corner. He's heading for the end zone. Gets caught from behind him. Boy, it looked like he slowed down at the very end. I think he thought he was in the end zone. No? No, he was going to get caught. Okay. Okay. He was caught by Tyson Proctor, who had the angle on him. Nice job of reading the play. He keeps it. And the blocking up front is just perfect. When you have nobody to block, that's perfect blocking because it's already taken care of at the line of scrimmage. No, he slowed down. He slowed down. If we see that again, you'll watch him slow down when he gets close to the He was running straight. He felt the pressure and then moved to the right side. That's what makes him slow down because he's trying to evade one tackle and runs into the other. How come you don't do that when you're driving a car? Because I can't run. I don't like to drive fast. This time the Mounties make the stop with 7.37 to go here on Sportsnet, USA.net. At the door again. Fullerton has to sit out one play, helmet off. Skelton loses 16. his Skeleton. helmet, so he has to come out. Stopped Kane Wilson field. now comes in the game. Hola. Hola. 
Chase Stewart, now the running back for the Hornet. Interviewed on the coaches show here on sports at USA.net. Chase Stewart gets it, goes straight up the middle. Still going, they're trying to get it in the end zone. Gets close, he's gonna be down. They're gonna call him down at the three. Third and goal for the Hornets. And with that last run, Ladarius Skelton went over the hundred, went over the hundred yard mark barrier. And here is Stewart right up the middle, working hard, looking for his first touchdown. He doesn't want to give it up. Offensive line knows. I formation for the Hornets. Wilson under center. Stewart the deep setback. Kane keeps it himself. Throws it. Take in there, and I thought the ball was gonna bounce, Corey, before it got there, but John Snowden catches that, the big tight end out of Washington, McKinley High School. And who says they don't utilize their tight ends? Twice today. Yes, they did, and both, when they use them, good things happen. One 50-yard catch to Hoffman, and this touchdown, and there's a better catch than throw. Watch Snowden go down below and make that catch at his shoestrings Pulls it up for the big man, that's agile, and scores his first touchdown of the season. Ball is spotted, kick is up, and the kick is good. good. With six, 19 to go. Here in the fourth quarter, it's the Hornets, 49. The Mounties, 14. You're watching Hornet football on Sportsnet, USA.net. Corey Nalen, Mark Pavlovich, Richie Melgoza down on the sideline. Avery Jordan down there with him. Don't forget to watch the Coaches Show with Richie and Avery every week. You can find that. Go to YouTube, go to Orange News. You can find the Coaches Show. They go out to the football field every week and visit with the coaches here on sportsnetusa.net. Get a little insight. Ryan Osborne's got a show that's tied into their show on Sportsnet as it's Ryan Reminisces on SportsnetUSA.net every week. So make sure you, you tune into those. Richie and Avery getting the insight on the Hornet football program here on SportsnetUSA.net. Miss those days of acting. Now that I write my own lines. So yeah. the Hornets. That's next week, Mark, when we get in how to write copy. Hornets, 49. The Mounties, 14 here on Sportsnet USA.net. Defense has been up to the challenge, and the offense continues to keep the mortar running. Sportsnet USA.net. I don't want it. You catch it. And of course, Chris Jackson turned around and looked at everybody and said, wait a minute, I got to get it? He takes it there and is down immediately when he catches the football. 6.15 to go here in the fourth quarter. Remember, Golden West College on SportsNetUSA.net. Sean Haylock tonight. Remember all the home games? It's Andrew King and Rashawn Haylock. L.A. Valley football on SportsNetUSA.net. Luke Hobbs calling the action on that. And tonight it's 7 o'clock for Golden West at Cerrito, so it's audio only. And that'll be Rashawn Haylock at SportsNetUSA.net. So the Hornets, Stametti comes out, throwing it quickly, trying to do something. So you lose your main quarterback, you come with Stametti, who only had one completion in the game. If your mount sack, if you can get your starter back, wonderful. But if you can't, or even if you do, now you've got a backup quarter that quarterback that has played a while and it reinforces you for the rest of the season if you're the Mountie. You got depth now that has played the game. Look for that glimmer of hope anywhere you can if you're a Mountie fan. Stametti keeps it himself. Runs the left-hand side. Gets taken down at the 45-yard line. Stop made by Kerry Walker out of Colleen, Texas. Shoemaker High School. So you get Ronald Draper out wide to the right. Chris Jackson in the slot on the right-hand side. Stamitti at quarterback, second down and six at the 45 for the Mounties. The Hornets walk up, Stamitti fills the action. They throw it over here to Jackson. Jackson turns the corner at the 50, stays on his feet, cross midfield to move the chain. So Chris Jackson out of Pomona High School, Pomona, California, 
5'10", 180-pound freshman. Good receiver for this Mountie football team. They've got a few on this Mountie team. I tell you what, they can light it up. First down and 10 at the 47. Stametti steps back, not feeling any pressure. Throws it over there. Once again, passes are made, and you wonder, you look at the defense. This is where, if you're the Hornets, even if you've got your... Well, this is a safety problem. The safety has to read the play, read the quarterback. He knows he's going over there, locks on to receiver, and he stays back. The receiver moves past the backer in between the soft spot of the zone. Stametti throws against. Ball comes out. They're going to call the receiver down. Actually, basketball right back up to him. It was knocked out of, knocked out of his hands, and he's holding like a loaf of bread. That's Brian Terry over there. Knocks it out of bounds, or excuse me, knocks it out of his hands and it pops right back into his belly. Second. Maybe we're going to go down to the sideline mark after this play with Avery. Stametti goes back, looking down in the corner. Jackson can't get underneath him. Had him. Avery, what do you got going down there? Uh, the coaches are extremely happy with the defense right now. The defense has definitely done more than their share right now, holding the Mounties to only about 70 yards. Meanwhile, on the other side of the ball, while the Mounties hold their opposition to, to about two yards, they racked up about 250 so far, guys. Thanks, Abe, wow. So Mount Sack, as he said, they only gave up an average of two yards rushing and Fullerton well, broke that by about 248. Third down, Stametti says, I gotta find something possible. Knocked out at the sticks. So that's going to move the chain. And you know, you. I tell you what. Chicken. A nice square out, Mark. Just a nice square out to Hanish. Picks up the first down. And if you're, if you're, you know, you look at this Mount Sac team, they go back in the same direction. It, you look at this Mount Sac team and you look at what they did, Corey, they don't give up. This is what you like, and you know that you've got a tough schedule left. Yeah, this game's good. And the quick pop, quick go, Bolsha row, close to the first down. Wait a minute, was that a poem? Almost a haiku. Okay. Stametti says, we'll try it one more time. The Hornets come to the middle. Stametti says, I'm going to throw it. Throws it to Hanish out on the outside. Gets taken down immediately when he catches the pass. Bryce Hanish out of Chino Hills. And you know what I like about the live stats, Mark? What's that? You can see him on your phone. It's instant access. Here's your replay. And he's brought down. Hanish does a nice job as he's undercut by Brian Terry and Jacob Jones. I feel like you doing basketball. Oh, yeah, i tell you what, makes you feel really intelligent. Then they go, wow, Corey's quick with a pencil. So if you also want to get the stats of the game while you're watching TV, go to your computer or your phone or your tablet, whatever device you use, go to Fullerton College Athletics, click on Fullerton College Football, and they'll say live stats. Click on those live stats. It gives you up instant access to those stats for the game. You do know Phil Thurman's doing those stats, don't you? Yeah, they're a little bit behind, but that's okay. Not scared. I was going to ask you if they're accurate. I didn't hear you yelling down there saying, guys, these numbers are wrong. No, no, they got them. They're yeah. good. Look at me talking like a technologically advanced marvel. Ed Ford, watch out. Corey Nealon knows what he's doing here <laughs> on Sportsnet, USA.net. We don't go that far. Oh, I'm sorry. Hand it straight up the middle. Into the end zone, they're going to mark him just down, and they walk. Andre Walker, I thought, made it into the end zone. Darius Holmes on the stop. Talk about big guy, 6'6", 335, out of Allenhurst, Georgia. I formation, Walker the deep set back. Stamitty drops it himself, tries to reach across. Ball comes out. The Hornets have it. He tried to reach across, but it was poked away, picked up by Corey Rose. And I couldn't see who was on the interior who poked it out. I don't know if it was Omar Gonzalez or not. 
So Stametti tries to take it and push it across as it punched away with 2.31 to go here in the fourth quarter. And the Hornets will have it. There you go, Corey. So he tries to punch it in and it looks like it was a linebacker shooting through. It was Rudy Navarro out of Fullerton High School. After this play, we're gonna go down to Richie Melgoza as we're going into the fourth quarter, or in the fourth quarter, almost the end of this ball game as a new quarterback. Photo now in the game, Johnny Photo at quarterback. And we get a safety as Photo gets taken down in the end zone for a safety for Mount Sac. Richie, you down there? Yeah, you guys were over uh, earlier talking about the stats. One important stat, the Mounties have an 80% uh, percentage inside the red zone, and today that is not the case. And as you can see by the scoreboard, that has hurt them so far. Back up to you guys. So Fullerton defense, like you guys said down there, putting in work and getting the job done. So. Nice job. See, I got to work in two cliches that time. I saw that. They did? Brian, Brian Crooks has got to be a little happier down there. We know Brian Crooks has is, is not been the happiest guy the last couple weeks. Talked to Phil Austin about his defensive backs. He was a little salty before the game. Had new starters out there talking about it. And, you know, I guess those guys realized, hey, if I'm not doing what my coaches want, Corey, I'm not going to get to play. Yeah, so number one. And they one, responded today. Yeah, number one versus number two turned into number one, just dominating. Also, Ventura later, number seven at Riverside, number four. So, big week. Yeah, I mean, you really can't see where the ratings may go different here on sportsnetusa.net. So, we'll have a few highlights after the game, and then uh, we'll get ready for more parts. So with safety, you have to get the free kick after the safety as Photo gets taken down in the end zone. Caught over the shoulder there by Hughes. Hughes picks it up, looks to go the outside, dips inside, then turns the corner, stays on his feet, tries to go down, then gets back up at the 40, all the way out to the 45. 2.14 to go here in the fourth quarter. And it looks like the Hornets are going to go 4-0 with a 49-16 lead right now over Mount Sac. The Hornets will go 4-0. Mount Sac will go to 3-1 here on SportsNetUSA.net. want to thank the Fullerton College TV department for always being out here for the home game. What a great job. That's how come you see these great shots, the instant replays, the recaps at halftime and at the end of the game. Want to thank them for doing a marvelous job to all the young men and young women that work on that. Thank you once again. What a great program. You want to learn about TV and how to work in this industry? No better place to go than Fullerton College. Get a timeout here at 214 of the fourth quarter on SportsnetUSA.net. That's the first timeout. Don't forget the Coaches Show with Richie Melgoza. Every Jordan, every week here on SportsNetUSA.net. Conversations should be interesting this week as they talk to them as the team gets ready for more park. Ryan Osborne will be back with us next week. He's gonna take a road trip with Corey Nalen, Gabby Nalen, and myself up to Moore Park. First down and 10 for the Mounties on the 45. 2.14 to go. Okay. Steve Nava now in at quarterback. Throws it right there on the money to Chris Jackson and Chris Jackson just walks into the end zone. Steve Nava in for two plays of this game, we get a flag. 
at the 31. It's going to be 55 Steven yards, Nava, but I don't know what the penalty is. I don't. I didn't see any contact. Here's the replay. In coverage over the 19. middle. Pass defense. interference on the decline. Hornets. They call. Here's all the play. Touchdown. You're trying to figure out on who? I'm just going to keep looking at my phone. So Steve Nava comes in for two plays in this game. and says, well, it's not that difficult. All you have to do is stand back here and throw the football. Look at that, touchdown, Mounty, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Steve Nava saying maybe I should be the number two or maybe the number one for the Mounties next week on Sportsnet, USA.net. Ball spotted, kick is up, and the kick is good. With 2.05 to go, the Mounties looking to do something. It's the Hornets, 49. The Mounties, 23 here at SportsUSA.net. Other scores around the state of California. San Mateo stays unbeaten at 4-0, beating Butte, 51-12. Butte drops to 3-1. Also, early games, well, that's it. First quarter, Allen Hancock right now in Santa Ana, nothing to nothing, no score there. And that's about it. LA Valley at Glendale, that's why they're not gonna be on sportsnetusa.net tonight. Six o'clock kickoff. Wow. Well, you live up there, that's not a bad drive. But if you live down here, you have to go to Glendale. <laughs> Glad nobody's calling us up saying, hey, can you guys do two? We never make it. So we get timeout on the field. Mount sack. That's their the second Mount timeout. Mount sack calls timeout. With 2.05 to go, it's your Hornets 49. The Mounties 23 here on Sportsnet USA. Net. So you look at the road next week, Moore Park. The Hornets should, should be able to take care of business. Then we go to Grossmont. Then we head back home. And when you look at it, if they win those two games, Corey, the only maybe big obstacles are Saddleback and Golden West College that could derail them from getting back to that state and possible national championship here on SportsnetUSA.net. Yeah, because Golden West always plays tough. They're, they're a good team, well coached. But yeah, like Nick Mitchell. Saddleback, you know something's gonna go wrong against Saddleback. What catch? Who, who, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did that ball bounce twice? And then you have Palomar, Grossmont, OCC, and Moore Park. Got to be careful. Yeah, you do. Ball kicked down the middle, taken on a knee, right at the 47. So we'll see if Photo comes back out at quarterback. So overall, an impressive victory by the Hornets today against Mount Sac. This game showed me something for Fullerton. After their game last week, we saw holes in the defense. There are still some holes, but again, they covered them up, they played better. This, this team showed you that, yeah, we're good, but we, we're going to listen to our coaches, and when you do, good things like this happen. Trey Fullwood now in the game at running back. Johnny Photo at quarterback for the Hornets. Johnny Photo takes it. Stays on his feet, turns at the 50, sidesteps down to the 49. So Photo gains six on the play. And really when you're a Hornet quarterback, Corey, it's gotta be difficult. I mean, David Hendrick is also a quarterback for this team. You get, you watch Johnny Photo on this run, does a little soft shoe and a ballet turn to get down the field. Second down for the Hornets. Cross the 50 at the 40. You get jump at the line of scrimmage. Photo looks back over the sideline to change things up. Hand it off. Fullwood 
across the middle, stays on his feet, refuses to go down. Oh, Chase Stewart, my mistake. Photo looks over, Stewart there. We're at 49 seconds, should be the last play of the game. Ball comes out, then gets picked up. So we're at 32 seconds. Want to thank Zombie Donuts for making this game possible and Miller Toyota of Anaheim here on Sportsnet USA.net. And that's going to bring us to the end of the game as the Hornets come away with a huge victory out Mount Sac. It's the Hornets 49, Mount Sac 23 on Sportsnet USA.net. Well, a big victory for the Hornets to say the least. And Corey, 4-0, we thought this game was good. Let's be honest, you and I both thought this game was gonna be a lot closer. Yeah, we thought it was gonna be a lot closer. You know, watching Fullerton and the way the practice went last week, hearing what was going around, you didn't know if they were gonna come out victorious. Well, they pretty much quieted and quelled that, that talk. They came out from the get-go, and Mount Sac, we can't say they weren't ready, but Fullerton definitely the better team. Yeah, and when we saw the game at College of the Canyons and some hiccups at the quarterback position where they dropped the ball, you sort of thought, boy, are we going to still see that two-headed monster? I'll tell you what. We, we, the let me put, let me, let the me put it this way. Yang is working yeah, right now. Yeah, this is the thing the whole season long. If you, if you don't do it, then we don't know why. Yeah, it, it really is working. The receiving core is wonderful. The running backs still haven't done it, and I really do think that the receiving core – the defense is finally picking up where everybody else has left off, and now they're totally all together. So we're going to wrap it up, Mark, and I know we got some highlights coming to end it. So as they shake hands on the field, this is something with this rivalry. Here's the first highlight with Kane Wilson with the screen, screen pass to Justin Mannyweather. A good job of Mannyweather showing his kickoff and punt return skills to elude tackles and go 48 yards down the field and finally end up dropped at the 20 yard line. Kane Wilson had a strong game, two touchdowns passing, one touchdown running. Here he is on the sack in the third quarter, forcing the fumble and a turnover. That's his fourth fumble loss, this fourth fumble, third loss this season. And there's Cameron Jackson being taken out by Fullerton late in the fourth quarter by Ryan Simpson. So that'll do it. When here's a final, one of the final plays is safety. Johnny Photo gets taken down by Brandon Larry for Mount Sack. And here's that pass from Nava. He says, yeah, I can throw the ball to Cameron Jackson who had eight catches for over 100 yards with that reception there and one touchdown. So your Hornets come away with a big victory, 49 to 23 over Mount Sack and now go 4-0 here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Next week, we're in the Moore Park. For Avery, for Richie, for Corey, for Gabby, and I'm Mark. We want to thank you for watching Hornet Football here on Sportsnet USA.net. And to call, oh, to Florida College TV, you thought I wasn't going to love them. I always give them a little special love at the very end. I want to thank all the men and women from Florida College TV for what they do. Thank you. You guys just make this special for us being out here for every home game, for all of us. Is your Hornets are 4 0. Next week, we head to Moore Park here on Sportsnet USA.net.